Welcome to the seventh, uh, Ricky Gervais show on, uh, podcast. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, talking of that, that's only five to go then, isn't it? Five to go in this series of twelve. Oh, still seems a lot though, doesn't it? We'll, uh, we'll take a little break. I'm sure we'll come back. Through popular demand, I'm hoping. Yep. I'm hoping to put that on the poster back by popular demand. Well, I'm it? hoping it's by overwhelming public demand. Which yeah, is exactly. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. As we're doing it for nothing. Yeah. We, we want to get a little bit of a pat on the back. Don't <laughs> exactly. We? Please. Somebody. Um. Do they so, give awards out for podcasting? Oh, if they do. Hoo hoo. Hello. <laughs> I am already died in my speech, baby. <laughs> um. And I was thinking that everyone listening, um, if you want to register, uh, your email with us, we'll let you know when we're back on air. Maybe later in the year. Uh, go to rickygervais.com and just, um, register. And then when I do a general mail out, I'll let you all know when Carl Pilkington is back. You are a good guy to these people, Rick. No sweat. <laughs> now, there's been an awful lot of correspondence. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's backing up there. We've got acres of it to get through. Um, it is a bit mental, actually, but it's very flattering. And, th and thank you all. And people have uh, sent such brilliant things in and spent so much time doing them. There's someone sent in this, uh, uh, uh mock-up of, we, we were talking about the, um, those Russian sort of iconoclastic artefacts, and someone's mocked up Carl Pilkington as Saint Carl the Bewildered. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's so good. Can we put and those that, on the web? Yeah, I think, let's put that up on, um, com, and that's from, uh, Joe Murray in Philadelphia. We've also got one, which is a little work of art from Ed Ferrari, and it's the three of us in a studio, and it, it's, it's just great. It's very flattering picture of you there, Rick. You look about 14. I know, I, I've come out very well in this. Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> look at that! Yeah. And you, well, I don't know what you are, you, you, your foot, your, your head is about two foot long, and in real <laughs> life it's only 18 inches long, isn't it? <laughs> so he's exaggerated yours yeah. a little bit, but it's a lovely drawing, we put that up on the web as well. It's just, uh, so, uh, everyone go to rickygervais.com, everyone register, please, and we'll email you, and everyone, um, uh, keep sending stuff in, so thank you very much. Carl, Joe from Bradford asks, what body parts can you live without? He wants to know, he's obviously having sleepless nights thinking about this. What, so? Oh. <sighs> the, With the, a brain. <laughs> <laughs> he's coped this far. <laughs> so the bits that I've got now, if I had to get rid of yep. one of them, yep. what wouldn't I miss? Yes. Um. See, I, I did a bit of an experiment on this, right? Brilliant. It's, it's my job at home to, to wash up, right? Suzanne does. She gives you all the really big responsible <laughs> ones. Yeah. She, she, she sort of like pays the bills and wires the house. And she go, you go, what can I do? And you can go, well you can go and play with the worms in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it's my job to, to wash up and that, right? <laughs> and, um, I thought to sort of make it interesting and stuff. Uh, I thought, I wonder if I can do it, right? If I didn't have any thumbs. <laughs> 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 and so what did you do? So I just sort you of- You sliced it. off your thumbs. I, I just sort of <laughs> held them in, and it's amazing how, like, it took me ages. Just having that, that one thing gone. Well, it's part of our evolution, the opposable thumb. Basically, that's when we soared. Th 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 these are milestones in human evolution, the opposable thumb, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. Th these are- these are massive things in- in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean, before we got here there was people who, uh, whose eyes were looking in their head? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that. Is that what well, you no. mean? No, no, because when we got sort of, uh, uh, binocular vision, where, um, uh, we could, we could, you know, because we were, uh, predators have a forward face. I'm, I'm going way back, I'm not just saying, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying chimps had eyes on the side of their head, but I, I was saying big, big, major, um, milestones in any evolution. Mm. Uh, I, I, I lost you at evolution. Yeah. I so, uh, when you were doing this experiment, washing up, um, you say that you found it difficult, it took you ages, so you, you didn't, you didn't just give, give up once you realised how essential thumbs were, no, you actually washed up everything. I just think of Suzanne walking in and Carl's there, just covered in water and, and fairy liquid suds, standing on a pile of broken crockery. Yeah, lun p plunging his face into the sink every <laughs> three, thirty seconds and just <laughs> swishing his head around. <laughs> <laughs> but we talked about the, the washing up thing before, I don't know, and, uh, we stood there washing up. And, um, I sort of look out, out of, out of a window, so the sink's in front of the window. Yeah. And that's why I, I quite like washing up, because I can just look out onto the street, 
see people going past. There's like a local homeless fella called Franco. You know, I look out that he's all right and everything. Sure. But I was looking across the way, right, and there's some uh, sort of there's some Chinese people who live on in a flat, right, really small flat, and they're up till all hours. I don't know what they're doing, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they decide to back up at about half three in the morning. That they're always really noisy. And that, but above them, there was some woman, right, who um, the sort of bedroom is on par to our kitchen, right? Yeah. So I'm sort of washing up. Yeah. And I sort of look across and see see this woman with, uh, like, you know, no no pants on and that, no no bra on that. Naked? Yeah, just... That's the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just wandering about, you know, on that. So I was like, oh, what's going on there? So I kept, carried on washing up and that, right? And uh, <laughs> kept looking, and then I was looking and she looked at me, right? So we made eye contact. <laughs> sure. So I was like, oh, God, right? So, um... What I thought the best thing to do was, was sort of drop me pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little bit, just like, you know, I had boxer shorts on and that. I thought if I just show a little bit of, little bit of sort of arse cheek, then it's kind of like, right, we, we quits. Right? <laughs> I don't understand the thinking. <laughs> so, so Suzanne's watching the telly, right? I think she was watching Sex in the City or something. Yeah. She sort of turns around to see how I'm getting on with the washing up. Right, she sees me with like my pants sort of down a little bit with my arse out. She said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Don't look now." I said, "But there's a woman over the road, right? We know pants on and that." She caught me looking. I'm just giving her a bit back. <laughs> I love the fact that he explains the rules and Suzanne's meant to go. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. But I don't. So, so hang on. So you 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 showed a bit of your ass. You turned presumably to show the ass. Or well, waggled the ass at the woman. I had to lift it up a little bit on the sort of on the draining board. What? Hang on though. What, um, what did she do? Did you register her reaction when she saw a bit of your ass? What happened? When she saw my ass. Yeah. Well, then I wasn't looking because I thought, in a way, it, I don't want I don't want it to look like. Well, I've seen a bit of your stuff, here's a bit of mine. <laughs> I just right. thought, at the end of the day, I caught a glance of you. It's only fair. You've had a bit back. You know, I'm not you making see, a big I, deal out I of it. I genuinely think James Stewart missed a trick here in Rear Window. Yeah. This would have been, you know, a much better film had James Stewart just popped his pants down. It would have given a whole new meaning to the to the title Rear Window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's tricky, though. I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Because I've told you before, there's the old woman across the way who's... Just sat there reading a book. I, I looked through everybody's windows like that. Uh, remember that film, that slither, sliver or something? Okay, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. <laughs> Chris has emailed a mantra for Carl. We were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never as a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert. Your little round headstone. <laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man. He says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, because at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> So everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It looked daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So all, all it is is- I mean there's a lot Hang of on, facts- it, it, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's- <laughs> I'm wondering again, that's almost- I don't think you should start sending them in, but that could almost be the B-side to, uh- B-side to Nob at Night. I could eat a Nob at Night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh. Dead or alive. Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> no, but, but sometimes, like, there's people who, who are now, now dead, but everybody raves about them. Like but, but are you saying, but he, he wants you to, to live that life, not have been that person. Are you saying that if you chose Napoleon, you'd be Napoleon, but he'd be back to life, um, uh, walking around now on the bus, or he, he you know, it'd be the the eighteenth century or what? What are you saying? I'm, I'm, what what I mean is, if I'll just answer the question: Who would you be and why? It's someone you no, admire no, no. or you think had a good life? But, just answer but the what question. What I mean is, it's good to be remembered. Like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke, but I wouldn't want the asshole that he had. So I don't want to live his life, right? 
but it's good to be- You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of, uh, 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 Saving the world. Yeah. Well, th that's- that's what I mean, but is he saying who would I wanna- whose job would oh. I wanna take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this, if he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. <sighs> a lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't they? So, <sighs> some of the names flowing through your head now? Um, I was thinking, um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that! I never expected that! Uh, he, he, so he, when he, what, so his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving, uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may maybe, you know, his, his worries are different worries. With, you know, people who have a lot of money, come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, He's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that. I Mainly know. because he's got, you know, he's got more, more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's gonna get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor, you've got the one house. If there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then. I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Whereas with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful <laughs> life and happy life, there's more for you to lose is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got, me, me timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So now, suddenly- Five I've, until seven, washing up, with no <laughs> thumbs. I, I like, I like, I, I've sort of turned into, like, an old person, <laughs> where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy- and now the main event. So but hold on, how old are you? You're 31, aren't you? 32. 32, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne Shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard the word cobblers. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. <laughs> I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly. Because last, like, last time you were going to the toffee shop. <laughs> yeah! And they were going to the cobblers. Next week is the candlestick maker. <laughs> But all I, all I mean is, that suddenly is a nice little day out, I'm sort of putting my coat on, going, right, I'll go and, go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's, cobbler's alright, he's, you know, he's doing, you know, he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling, um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about, uh, my Uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who, um, he lived in like a, a bed set and he had two tellies. He had, he had like one that, that the sound didn't work on, oh and right. one that the picture didn't, but both together, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So as long as he was watching the right, the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly, and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but he was- he Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide, why do you sleep in a rubber dinghy? He, he just liked boats and stuff, and, uh, he sort of- <laughs> Yeah, I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on, boats are better to sail on. Well, he just- he just had it in there, it's a bed set, it was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this- he's got it's this- He's moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy, so he's thinking, well, rather than it get in the way, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a- he was a cobbler. <laughs> and he- he used to, like, repair, like, my shoes and that, right? Yeah. But he- he'd always sort of overdo them. <laughs> right, so- What do you mean? Like, um, <laughs> Fancy. Do you know, like, Pimp My Ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a- the stereo? Yeah. Well, no- There was he'd, horns? He'd- 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 Na -na 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 -na. Here comes Carl- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkington, he's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, he'd just make shoes that would last forever, so instead of putting, like, one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you- it looked like one of them built up shoes. <laughs> that you never see. It just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever, <laughs> but they did. But they look like I, orthopedic I was, shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like the suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out, <laughs> but he's he's a cobbler, and you know it's work. That's that's always always there for you, isn't it? I uh, suppose so. So you went out with to 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 to, to take uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So I just took them to the cobblers and that, and that that was a, like a nice little job for the day. Um. I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog, you know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they what they pay in that, but I got a little letter in my little letterbox saying, you know, if you if you're free in the day, what they pay you to walk pay, a dog, they pay you to walk a dog and that. And I thought if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, 
you just went from a job, right, where you were the head of production at a radio station, dare I say it, on, I, 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 can I discuss your, uh, Well, it was an all right wage, yeah. It was very good. But I wasn't happy, so it's pointless. No, I know that, but to go from the head of a department on a, a lot of money to walking dogs and doing a paper round, I, I don't know. I, no, but I, it's about being happy, isn't it? I know, but that's, that's commendable if that's true, but it, okay. And all that right. makes you happier? Well, I haven't, I haven't walked the dog yet, but I'm just saying if I do, I mean, I'm not taking it if it's raining, I'm just <laughs> thinking if it's a nice sunny day and I fancy a potter, I'll, I'll go round to her and say, well, how much are you paying, I'll take, take the dog a walk and sure. stuff. But I, I can't believe some of the words that have cropped up in this, it's, it's, it's 2006 now, potter, cobblers, toffee shop, it, it, it's, uh, it's very, very strange. Do you live in Narnia? <laughs> The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Right, uh, a lot of people are sort of emailing in sort of brainy stuff. Brilliant. Right, uh, which, you know, the more the merrier. I'm, I'm happy getting all this stuff and if, if, you know, it grabs me eye, I'll run it by you and you can sort of tell me about it and that. And getting a lot of stuff about, uh, philosophy. Oh yeah. And all that. Um, Descartes, that's another one that's mentioned on an email. Descartes. Yeah. The French philosopher. Yeah. What was what's, what's, what's your question? Well, he, he sort of cropped up on an email. Someone said, uh, what do you think of, of him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. He, um, uh, famously, he, he pondered his, his own existence. Uh, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. He was thinking about that. He was thinking, how do I know all this is true, everything around me? And he thought, uh, well, I can see it and I can smell it and I can hear it. And he went, oh, yeah, but my senses can be fooled. I could be dreaming. And he thought, well, that's true, I could be dreaming. But if I'm dreaming, then at least I'm alive. At least I have some sort of consciousness. So if I'm even thinking about anything, uh, you know, I am, I exist. I think, therefore I am. Cogito ergo sum. But we don't need to know the Latin bit. Why is everyone always going back to Latin? It was ages ago. <laughs> Why is that language always being... And w were Latin people always in a rush? Because they seem to be like words for full sentences. Why couldn't they just set at the time and say what they want to say? <laughs> and it's just like, what, what was the rush? I teach Latin! What about Plato? Right, Greek. Right. Now, would you say he's he's a bright bloke? Yes, I would. I'd say he's a very, very bright bloke. Right, let me tell you this. <laughs> right? If he's that bright, you know how he got killed? No. Got hit on the head by an egg. Fucking <laughs> 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 hell! Well, he's right. not, he's not so clever then, is he? That's what I'm saying. Boo! What's the story with the egg? He was, um, he was on holiday or something, right? <laughs> and... <laughs> he was on holiday. In Greece, probably. He yeah. was at, he was having a walk about and a bird was flying over the, over his, um, over sort of- This over bird was what? A great orc? What, what, so, what size bird killed him a, with his was, egg? It was a big one, yeah. Was it? And, and the way they used to crack- well, An ostrich on a hang glider. The way they used to crack the eggs open to let the kids out, they used to drop them on rocks. <laughs> Dropping its egg to let the kids out. You're a <laughs> maniac. You are a maniac. And Plato <laughs> had a little bald head. Right. So from the top, the bird's there looking down, and it goes, "Oh, there's there's a little rock. I'll drop the egg." Hit him on the head, killed him. Now this is what I was saying before about. I mean, what I'm letting too much go now because I'm so desensitised to his nonsense. I let him go. The bird saw Plato and said, "There's a rock down there." Yeah. Well, if he stop it, if these birds are killing people with bald heads, you've got to be terrified. So, but listen, this is what I'm saying though, right? Before about knowledge and that, our, our knowledge is, is hassle or success is That's hassle. That's that, I, now, th I think that was Newton, <laughs> knowledge is hassle. Now, what, what, but why, why is, is Plato's intelligence got anything to do with the fact that this bird dropped it because, an egg on his head? Because he was intelligent and he's probably earning a nice few quid yeah. by giving out whatever messages he gave out. Yeah. He could afford to go on holiday to exotic places. If he was working in a factory, <laughs> he wouldn't have been on this beach with big birds dropping eggs. <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, in a way, it backfired. His knowledge killed him. And that, I think, was Kierkegaard. His knowledge killed him. That's- I mean, where you got this stuff about him being on holiday? Well, he, he was- he, he shouldn't have been on the beach. He was only there having a break or whatever from doing what he does. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't on holiday. <laughs> A 
again, I can't remember which show this was that we were discussing this, but we talked about um, well-known phrases and um, quotes from the past. We talked about Benjamin Franklin. People have, uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. Oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't, I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Um, willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Willy nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them. Like, like last week, I've heard of it, but but I've what does willy nilly mean? Just sort of like throwing it about all over the place. What? What, what do you mean? But what someone said, what? What does what does the term willy nilly mean? It just sort of means you know carefree. That's right. Yeah. So okay, but what good. does a stitch so in time so say? So you understood willy nilly. So you used a phrase. Yeah, but it sounds I mean, nice, you used it. You said it willy nilly. But um, uh, <laughs> you you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I I, I don't know. You what do you mean know. you don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh, so okay, if, it's not that clear. So it's if you got so if you got a jacket, yeah, and the seam starts coming undone. Oh, there's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Soon right. your sleeve falls off. So, you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. If you leave something that, that, that needs attention or repair, it'll get worse. So do it now. Do it in time. Yeah, they could have said a tile in su time saves nine on your roof. They just used a, you know, a sewing analogy. But it depends if you're busy at that point because <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done because you're messing about putting something out a hole in your coat. Is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away. So maybe I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching a stitch sometimes time, today, say in fifteen or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than, than a stitch in time saves nine? So yours is, this is what you want it to be a quote, right? Well, well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then, uh, you know, look, well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same, that's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like, I never go to the doctors. Unless it's really That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, particularly working class people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know, um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What? They what just pop- What are we in? They- <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Well, it's 2006. Yeah. Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean no! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick, you- Yeah, you, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a robot good. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Or something that- They, have, have, well, they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. No, they, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 up your back passage. They, what I are just, you worried I, about? I don't think- they, they need to do Are that you in embarrassed? Are you age? embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping A little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour I'm gonna have a finger up the arse, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the problem And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably- <laughs> Check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! How can they teach- Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But- but then- Who knows what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. 
Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Okay, I think it's probably time. I've just let me just check my watch. Yeah, it's monkey news time. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. Right. Last week we talked about uh, you know the the one who who was who was good at getting up buildings and that for uh, putting out fires and stuff. Ended yeah. up working for the fire department. Yeah, not true, but sure. Yeah. But if, uh, there was, if the building had good grippage, he was right up there. Yeah, yeah. it's not true, but come on. So this week, anyway, it's about it's more about tall buildings and stuff. Oh yeah. It was this bloke who was a builder. Oh yeah, right. and uh, you know what builders are like—they sort of move about, don't they? From from sort of building to building, just building. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, once they built it, the building's done, and they move on to they build some more. Building to building, just Where? building. Yeah. So he goes to his next job, and that right? Who does the builder? The builder. Yep. He goes to like the, the, the boss, the, the boss of this building, who's building it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> and he and he says what unto him? Do you need anything building? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. So anyway. So he says, uh, he says, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of work and that going about. Yep. He says, we're working on this one here. He said, uh, get going on it, like, there's your bricks and your cement and stuff, get on with it. Yeah. So mm. the, so Any plans? So ah. the, so this- <laughs> Just build. Just, just start building. Yeah. Go up. They're getting on with it and stuff, it's all going well. Right? Yep. Um, but he notices that there's someone working eye up, mm. right, on, <laughs> okay. on the top bit. Sure. Because, mm. you know, like, there's girders and stuff on these big yeah. buildings. Yeah. And he's still building and, the bottom bit, and which he's is still, weird. Yeah, well, that's that's the, the way they, they do it there, apparently, just to sort of speed it up, work from top to middle, from top to bottom. Sure, you know that's, I mean. and that's where, that's in imaginary land. So we put anyway. the spire on, now we better do the foundations, <laughs> yeah. and then put some stuff in the middle to keep it up there. So anyway, he's he's saying to, like, the other workers, he's going, what's, who's that up there? Who's that up like, there? He's, yeah. he's working on his own. The, what, the little fella, was he? And, the uh, little hairy fella up there. He's the little hairy fella up there with the top, uh, hard hat. And, and the other fellows were going, look, you know, don't ask questions, you know, the boss decides who he takes on, we're mm. happy to be getting paid here. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask questions! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll see him when he comes down. So he said, well, he's, he's pretty impressive, you know, the, the work rate he's doing, the way he's getting from one girder to the other. <laughs> he Swinging, seem, is he? He doesn't seem to be scared mm. of the heights or anything, he said, no, just let him get on with it, you know, we work well as a team. So anyway, <laughs> what nonsense is so, this? So oh, he believes all this. Yep. So he sees the boss and he goes, "That fella up there, he, uh, who's the fella up there? He's, he's pretty good." And he's like, "Look, you know, just get on with the job. Yeah, I'll pay you. Let's just all get on with our jobs." And that. <laughs> Lunchtime comes. They're all sat there, sat on a little wall, having the sandwiches. He's thinking he'll come down in a bit. He's yeah. just carrying on. Yeah. Is he just still going? Still yeah. going on that, right? Mm. So the fella says to the boss man, "He says, isn't, isn't that fella up there uh, going to come down and join us for lunch?" He said, uh, he said, like I said, mate, don't, don't worry about him, yeah. right? He yeah, said, very secretive. I'm suspicious about this fella. I don't know, yeah, why, I don't know, why, I don't know why he's working through his lunch. I don't know why he's not scared of heights. And I don't know why he's swinging from girder to girder. It's weird. Go on. So he said, oh, anyway, you've reminded me that he's up there. He said, um, he's doing a lot of riveting and stuff up there. He probably needs some more nuts to, uh... Right, sure. And what kind of nuts is that? Is that nuts to food or... So he said, "What nuts?" He said, "Yeah, just uh, there's a bag full of them there. Just just put them on the hook, send them up, and he can get on with his job." So anyway, he picks these nuts up, nuts, right? yep. just hooks them on. He thinks they're not that heavy, no. considering you know. I mean, they're normally pretty heavy, aren't they? Like nuts big and bags and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, he has a little glance in. Oh no, what's in there? Nuts. What you mean nuts that you can eat? Nuts that you can eat. Oh. Right? So they send the bag up, and he's thinking, "What's all that about?" He checks him out, starts to stare, works it out. You can see that. He's a little chimp running about, so he goes, I'm not happy with this. Why isn't he? Because he's working for an organisation that's, you know, there's unions for this sort of stuff, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah, he's not going, that's amazing. They've got a chimp riveting this building together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not scary. He's wondering if they're breaking union <laughs> rules. So he, he, go, he you goes- You half talk So he goes shit, and has a with He the goes boss. to the boss and he goes, look, I've worked out what you're playing at here. Yeah. He said, all them Is the there. boss sitting in a tyre? <laughs> He said, all oh, them lot out there might not be wise to what's what's going on here. He yeah. said, but I've, I've clocked it, and you're sending nuts up to it, it's a monkey, it's not on. So he goes, look, you know, we're just all trying to earn a living here. He said, uh, don't get involved in it. I'm happy to pay you, but I'm paying him, don't don't interfere. He's paying him? And he's saying, look, I, I'm just not happy with this, it's, it's not allowed. So the boss was saying, well- We pay peanuts, honest, mate, we get monkeys. He said, to be honest, mate, you know, uh, he, he's a great worker. <laughs> He's known for doing what he does. He's a good grafter. <laughs> if one of you's going to go, right, I'm afraid I'll have to let you go because he's, he's been here longer than that. Yeah, he was made redundant. None of that of happened. He, he was he was laid off. None of that happened. He's laid off and that, and that's no. where that saying about um, 
you know, like there's a lot of tower blocks and that in America. It's not like the uh, chimp off the old block. Is is where? <laughs> <laughs> so that's monkey news. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this uh, podcast. Who was it hosted by? It was hosted by a great bunch of guys called Positive Internet. They host the number one podcast in the world, The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, goodbye, and Carl Pilkington. Mm-hmm. Hello, welcome to the eighth in uh, this series of 12 podcasts, The Ricky Gervais Show, uh, with The Guardian. I'm Ricky Gervais. Hello. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, and Carl Pilkington. All right. So, thank you again for all your emails. Um, we're getting thousands. We, we're up to about a quarter of a million hits a week now, people listening to this show. Blimey. A quarter of a million people bothering to go in and listen to this show. Nothing else in their lives. Nothing all better around the to world. Do. It's unbelievable, though. North America, uh, Asia, South America, all over Europe. Um, and, uh, and thanks to everyone in England as well, um, where we do it from in a little room in London. Keep going to rickygervais.com and registering, uh, cause so when we finish these 12, we can email you when we come back and start again. We're gonna need a, a little bit of time off to, um, record the second series of extras. Well, I'll tell you more than that, Rick, you're gonna need some time off just to have a little breather, cause I know how hard you work. Uh, and, and you, mate. Well, thanks, mate, but I mean, you blinking work hard. But um, Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, cause Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off, you take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now, you're meant to be doing this, and yet you still so go you're, your holiday. life's a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday to, you, you, you potter around, you, 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 your, your big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers, so, why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, you know, it's, it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Gran Canaria. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well, there isn't much else to do at Gran Canaria. I mean, I, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a, like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol- volcanic, isn't it? It's and you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been, been near it before to another rock, which was just- But what, you had your fingers burned, why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like, just a big rock with hotels on, they can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think, they well, the next one- they are getting away with it. <laughs> but why, why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent, is this a giant rock? Because, because that's what you do, innit? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when, when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock, and he still went all that way. <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is, though, sometimes- it, Tell it, us it, about the- tell us about the moon landing. What- as you started it, what do you know about that? You know, cos I mean, so far you've given us a lot of insight into- into the, uh, the moon landing. So there was Armstrong. There was, uh, there was Armstrong and that. Yeah. There was, um, fella called Buzz. Yeah. And another bloke. Yeah. Poor bastard. Yeah, never remembered. <laughs> yeah, go on. And, uh, they went up there, got out, two of them did. One of them didn't bother, the one whose name, don't know who he was. <laughs> didn't even get out, stretch his legs right, went all that way. They had a potter about, had a wander, came back again. Yeah. So, that's all you need to know, isn't it? Yeah. But and in your opinion, pointless? Um, to me, yeah. <laughs> but to them, I'm sure they had a good time and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just take the risk, don't you? Go and visit a place. Make up your own mind. And so you, what do you make of this place? You enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was just a big rock, but did you-, you I bet you... the moon was better. <laughs> really? <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, you know, it's one of them, it's big hotel, which is, um, that's where I made a mistake. It was one of those, like, big massive places where there's loads of people and, you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Me. You've nailed that. But I've the... been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but- <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is like mental, and and it was all, it was it was full of old people, really. Ugh. I mean, that's that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just Grand old people. Everywhere. Yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought. Write it down, write, write stuff down. And do you hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that, is it any good? 
You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? <laughs> no, the, the, the most the, famous diary uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a, you know, a loft, knocking stuff up, not much going on in her life at that point, yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah, whereas you'd I'm be deprived an area, yeah. I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you gonna do? You, did you, did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just, uh... Oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary's meant to be sort can, of... Uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I... Carl! Some of it, though, is only relevant to me, it's sort of... Oh, in... this is... Please, give me it. Oh, my God. I mean, this isn't... I haven't just... Look how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those God. desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. And it's... Ma oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Franks had been like that. As she got out... <laughs> Right, uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh look, give us oh, that. Do you give us know, that. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No Amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best okay. to oh, look at. Okay. Oh look! Times. Oh my God! It starts on the first day. This is this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today. Woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that would be good. Right, a, a watch that counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one, but she said that about the iPod. How uh, and how would this device work? This watch. I mean, how would you uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins and the No, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how does it work? You can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you're in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just, well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean? Just pop it on your wrist. How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's querying his own, his own design. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's invented it, now he's <laughs> even shot. Uh, a fellow on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. <laughs> Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because re I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressed. Have we got any more carp? Have we got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, th well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He <laughs> was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, he can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. <laughs> Everywhere is pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. <laughs> day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant, we're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, enough, isn't it? That's amazing! Well, you may right. as well let me read on a bit more. Okay? No, this is amazing. Well, look, come back this to is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just, just that, uh... You know, when I when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? And I was <laughs> thinking about stuff. How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I don't have said. to. But in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, what? Just, uh, looking at that fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was thinking it was a bit weird. Yeah, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have, Carl, <laughs> Carl, li Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's, yeah, that's Is that how your mind works? In a way, yeah. 
And Brilliant. that's when, because, because I thought... <laughs> it <explains a> lot. <laughs> it's great that he has to think about whole sentences. Because I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought, I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, mm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from, uh Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right, or something. Right, so... So you think he might think in his... In, in his, his voice, in that, yeah, in that voice In his computerised voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest holiday in the world! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's the entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like, you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> You've done nothing so far. <laughs> he's done nothing, he's got a big hip. <laughs> oh, God, God. <laughs> uh. Uh. Woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Why does he write this down? Oh, God. Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot, dot, dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. He just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. <laughs> Everything's in the diary. I've just seen it get to the point where you're going, breathed in. <laughs> yeah. Breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his t-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak, <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> Just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. <laughs> we go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't, uh, it, it's, it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in, in weather that, if it was like that air, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we've got to sit in it, put your coat on. So are you going to continue to write this diary? Every yeah, single it's day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will, I will keep it up, because what I find as well is, I think earlier on, before I went away, I think I did learn something. And because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit, um, better. So... What was that? I just was thinking then, I forgot it now, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all, because I remembered the end of it before I read it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, if you've enjoyed, uh, um, the diary of Carl Pilkington, um, more next week, I hope. Another week's worth. That's amazing. I'm gonna try and get that published. We'll put the, uh, the odd page up on the, uh, web. Go to rickygervais.com. Don't forget to register there as well so we can email you and let you know, uh, what's happening. Brilliant. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hey, fool! Don't give me no back chat, sucker! I ain't here to mess with you. I ain't getting in no plane. I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Hmm. There are three great new comedies. New Green Wing, Yeah Fool, that's nearly ready. My Name is Earl, and The Egg Crowd. They're great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted, sucker. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4, fool. Switch it on, or I'll be around your house. You stay up all night shivering, cause you'll be so mad scared. Fool. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Rick, who hosts this podcast? The guys at Positive Internet, why? No, you, I know you're a big fan of those guys. Yeah, because they're brilliant. Well, they are, and they tell you they're working overtime. 
because we've had an email from Jake, who's the director at Positive Internet, and apparently he's been in touch with uh, the editor of the Guinness World Records book. All oh, right, um, and he's hoping to see if we can get this podcast in the uh, Guinness World Record Breaking section or the podcast world record record breaking section or whatever they call it i don't know exactly what record we've broken i assume it's just sheer number of listeners is it or, or yeah, we're the, number yeah one? it's the number one podcast and it's the biggest downloaded show ever at the moment right um i think that's because people have only had podcasts for a couple of years yes yeah, so well i don't know i mean i don't know when the next issue comes out i guess it's sort of december time i used to get the guinness book of records every year I, I, I love it. I've never understood why it was such a big seller. I mean, presumably, who's excited to find out whether, you know, I don't know, a man that can balance three egg cups on his head has beaten the record. Well, the they're real year. records as well, obviously. I, I used to go straight for that. I really loved the sort of, uh, animals fastest, strongest, all that sort of thing, biggest. But aren't uh, they the same every year? Well, well, no, they do change. And obviously there's, there's new entries to, to keep it exciting. Um, but what annoys me is that you, I, it looks like anyone can get in if you're willing to do something that no one else will bother with. Yeah. I, I, they did one on Big Brother where it was the, um, uh, stacking sugar cubes. And I was mm. thinking, well, no one's gonna bother beating that. No. There's people that, um, uh, walk along with a milk bottle on their head. And no one's going, oh, I'm a bit jealous of Bill. Why? He's broken the record. What? For walking along with a milk bottle on his head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go into training tomorrow. They're ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but I do like the, you know, the, the real ones. There was one in there I, I got on a couple of years ago. And, uh, it was about, um, uh, disasters. And there was one where there was some, um, big ornamental incense burners at this thing in, um, I think, uh, Thailand or, or Korea or somewhere. And, uh, they fell over and they killed seven of the congregation. And the headline was Biggest Jostic Disaster. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, there's no one trying to beat no. that. There's no one going, we need eight. Yeah. We need eight people. We're going for it tonight. Uh, what do I have to do? You have to stand quite near those big jostics. Okay. okay. And what record am I breaking again? Um, <laughs> we'll tell you after. Also, I think a lot of people waste their energy on this because there's one guy in there that can do the hundred metres in eleven seconds running backwards. And I want to say to him, turn round. Because I think you'd be fast forwards, you know, yeah, if you'd have only, yeah. from the age of ten, sort of, you, you, you might be, you know, one of the fastest runners in the world. Because you're never going to be considered one of the great athletes for doing No backwards. one knows about him. That's not going to ever be an Olympic sport, no. running backwards. Mm. Or, uh, well, um, and now the hundred metres, oh, one of them's putting a milk bottle on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is one to watch. There yeah. was a guy in there, um, I've always been fascinated by the guy, he had, um, the world's longest fingernails. And they were truly extraordinary. And they, and they, they, they went out and they started to curl around, obviously. And in the end, they almost looked like sort of a, you know, there was a big spiral of right. gnarled old fingernail. But I just thought, it just seemed like such a terrible affliction, really, to be walking around you know, with, with these giant fingernails. So much you can't do, just missing out on, you know, Jeff, you come in bowling? I can't. You yeah. know, just so many different things that you've missed out. Yeah. I've never quite understood who's willing to, to have this eat into their life, you know? It's gonna take over their whole life, just so they can have their photo in this book. It seems a very bizarre impulse. Carl, have you ever been tempted by any, any world-breaking attempts? Do you find them fascinating or futile? Um, I mean, you don't get, you don't get paid or anything, do you? No. They and do it for the pride. Well, say like the fella who can run with a milk bottle, could he, could he get a milk round? Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I, I can understand that if, if you can use the skill, yeah. but like you say, if it's, uh, if it's getting in the way of your life and that, then what, what's the point? There was yeah. a kid at school who said, I've, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. I went, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, no, I am, I am, I am. And he brought it in and it, now I don't know if this is a valid claim. He, he claimed to have been in the audience for what, in this particular edition, was labelled, you know, the largest audience ever for a sporting event, some giant Super Bowl game in America. Oh, and right. he claimed to have been in the audience. Now, does that? Ca does, do you think he, he he deserves to say he's in the Guinness Book of Records? Just well, mm. sort of. I, st I think that's a lot. As it was the largest audience ever, I think a lot of people can claim yeah. that one. I mean, if I he wanted to get a name check on doing that, he would have been best saying. I was sat in the audience in a bath of beans. <laughs> because yeah. then that, that would yeah. add to, the, yeah. to it, and yeah. you'd get a little, you know, they'd have you in the picture, wouldn't they? So. <laughs> He's Mr. Trick that there. way. Yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but, um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can, uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it, 
Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, I was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason. Particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil. How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but, um, people aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now, I don't know why I thought Spud, it's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato Head, I don't know why I thought Spud was a, was a cool nickname. I just, I think it's, it's a grown up name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like, uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids books, like the famous five or like the Bash Street kids, they'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of, uh, car park. Yeah. And here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, all right boys. And he's big and massive and he, a spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang and it's, I'm Pinky, this is Jojo and the tall guy Spud. And, and you know, it's on, never really it? caught. And he just went, oh yeah, right. And no one started, and I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course- Hey Spud, the first time I said Spud, you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, um, but I think that it, it, it kind of, actually in a way it probably revealed that I just was probably not in people's thoughts enough to, to get, to get for the nickname to catch on, you know, because you sort of yeah, need I, to be a real player in the I school. I think you should have gone somewhat more memorable, I mean, I'm not saying anything, goggle eyed freak or anything. What? Uh, what? No, no, just, uh, well, no, no, it's good, no, it's good advice, fatty. <laughs> Fatty, fatty pot That's the problem, I wasn't fat at school, and I suppose Carl didn't have a round bald head at school, did you? Uh, well, no. You, no. <laughs> did you have a nickname? Um, not, not. Really, I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on, you know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What, what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're gonna get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping round in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so it was, it worked in that sort of, uh, sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> 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 so, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is- yeah. I assume time. it's cause he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or, or he was in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. He had, he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God! The the problem <laughs> was because he did his tattoos himself. Oof. The ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so so there was him. <laughs> ah, great. And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, uh, but that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here that, that here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like- Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, cause there was that, that thing from like about 1970- Convoy. was Convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and my handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilkey O1. Cause right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so I just thought, give it a number. If someone wants Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> that is, that is people scrabbling for, I want yeah, yeah. a Pilky O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had, uh, I had Boxer Boy. Because I thought that, that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's a boxer boy in that. Yeah. So, just add them too, and I used to just go on there and... Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just, you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't you... meet people. You say, what's your handle? You're a box boy. What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right, cheers. No, but then, but then you'll say, like, then you go, oh, uh, what's your 20? What's that mean? That's, where are you? Well, why don't you say, where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who, who you know, you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, he keeps saying that, wash your handle, and they come back with something else. I, don't, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big is your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's that's. Oh, how what time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. There is no one gonna work that one out. So let's just play through this conversation. This is, is it, give us an example of how it worked. Right, so, um, so, y so, y you, you turn it on and that, and, and you start off, and, uh, there was something that you said at the start, like, uh... Hello! Just, you Breaker, breaker. Yeah, breaker, breaker, do you copy, or whatever. Yeah. Then someone will go. What does yeah. copy mean? No, what his name was. I want to hear because I want the fascinating conversations that Carl must have had. Yeah. And you go, uh, all right, it's a uh, boxer boy, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your goes, twenty? What's your twenty? And you go, well, just uh, I'm in Manchester. In, in the flat. Oh, mm -hmm. And they go, all right, yeah. How many candles are you burning? Mm. You go, oh, I'm thirteen. Oh. <laughs> so uh, that's the end, is it? Then you sort of, then you might sort of uh, say, what, what, uh, what was it? it was something like, what, what am I burning? Right. He's in burning again. Confusing, but go on, yeah. Why am I burning? <laughs> 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 the bacon, because I'm busy talking to you, you twat. <laughs> That's like, what's my power? What what uh, what strength am I coming in at? Oh yeah. Because then you can tell if they're quite close to you. So if you're yeah. getting someone burning a one, we've well, told them. We said, wait, what's your twenty? You go, I'm I'm in Macclesfield Street. Yeah, but oh, then, right. But then wonder you go, where they are. We have just told you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't but, know how far away they are. But then you go, oh, that's interesting, because uh, you're burning, f you know, burning three. I don't normally get a three. <laughs> <laughs> the least interesting hobby oh, do you know could what I ever do. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, because this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Unlikely. Yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, all right. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Once you're that, 20. That's the clues round again. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, once you're 20. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make, made a note <laughs> the first time, so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? <laughs> <laughs> It's that time again, do the jingle. Ow! Monkey you! Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was gonna, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna do a really good one. Okay, go. Okay. Oh! Chimpanzees up! Monkey news, you fucking- Right, do you know it's, it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again. Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year, is it? Yeah. And, uh, the, the, the last one that happened- Four years ago, yeah. There was a, there was a bit of an incident. Oh, no. Oh, well, I'd know about this then, because it would be... Well, it would be well, big news, because it's a, it's a well-known... It's televised well -known as well. Yeah. It's, uh, Do you remember any winners that were monkeys? In any of the no, tournaments? of course no, not. No, so, yeah. no, so it's anyway... It's not going to be that, because it wouldn't be true. Go on. Yeah. So anyway, one, one of the, uh, popular events. Um, bobsleigh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, it you know how it works. Well, it's you like need four men. Is it four men or five four men? It's four, yeah. so it's definitely four men that you need, need on four a men. team. Is it, and two, and there's two team bobsleighers. But well. they're always men, is that right, Rick? Well, that, well yeah, they have to be. Yeah. Anyway, to be human, so. Human, humans. Well, they have to be humans, yeah. yeah it's okay. the Winter Olympics for 
Yeah, so, so <laughs> let me just clarify. With the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they and they also, well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed them to. There's no way they could disguise it, because not only would they see it straight away, right, but they have blood tests. <laughs> right, okay. So, which would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, they have blood tests. non-human. It's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human <laughs> involved in a bobsleigh team. Fine, okay, so carry on. So anyway, this, this country, I don't want to name them, because they try to shake off this, this sort of, you know, this bad news. Oh, yeah, and you don't know. And it's it not true. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, the, the the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh yeah. But the problem was there was there was like two members mm. who were getting all like the press and stuff. Oh right, yeah. And one of them never got a look in, right? How tall was he? <laughs> anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in. Oh. So they were like, You're joking, we've we've qualified, we're getting into like the main race and everything mm. you can't leave us now and he said well you could do it all on your own before you know you, you, the way you were acting and that you didn't yeah. need me so i'm going mm. so they were like oh well, they, they need to replace him because there's a certain amount of people needed so uh so anyway so the clock's ticking it's getting close to the big race and everything of course it is yeah they're like what what are we gonna do here? the substitute what? they took with them what they well, they do? Must have, yeah. yeah, they would take the substitute. So get no, him they on. didn't. They didn't. They didn't have any of them and that. What, it's, what, you know, a lot I, of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it. Just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people, and mm. you know, you won't want to let your country down and that. And they're like, "What are we going to do?" Get a waiter or anyone. Anyway, in the, hotel. the time comes to the race. Seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three. Okay. Yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing round the track faster than normal, they, they're beating their old records. <laughs> right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got, a little bit smaller. Ah! Oh. Right, is he so in, is he in the bobsleigh or is he pushing? He's, he's in it. Oh, right. okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet that he's we can't see what he looks on, like. He's, he's got, got the his kit face. on. Uh, yeah. nobody knows who he is, but the country's loving it. Of course they're they are. like, well, it looks like we're gonna break all our records, you know. Good, it's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left is, is sort of kicking himself, thinking, oh, I could've been part of this. Anyway. This wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is, they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. <gasps> lot of flashing. Lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit, sort of, mental, and whizzes off, off the track, right, into like all the tyres and stuff. That they have for protective. Oh, uh, they love tyres, don't they? Bobsleigh members. <laughs> some of them you can. Some uh, sometimes you can find them swinging in one, or maybe eating a banana. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because you know you can do more damage to the. the well, neck. don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah. So they were like, yeah. just, just you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't. He, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members we used to have, but he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're oh. gutted. They lost the race. The little bloke is the bloke not saying anything. Is he not? He's he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything though? Anyway, word got out. Right, from one of the ambulance mm. drivers a few weeks down the line, once all the dust had settled on the Olympics and stuff, and mm. light news day and stuff, yeah. uh, it was reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that on that sort of dreadful night, when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. People were like going, ah, you're joking, I don't remember you? this, I don't remember this you, at not, you, Well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this Bullshit. is crazy talk, this. Bullshit. Bullshit. This is Bullshit crazy again. talk. Once talk, absolute shit. Where'd you get this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but the, but the weird thing is, that backed it up, well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo, saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'm here to tell you about Friday Night Comedies on Channel 4. There's three great comedies. New Green Wing, it's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from creator of Father Ted. Get your ass to Mars. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. I'll be back. Uzi 9 millimeter. Cause they did a divorce. 
Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, thanks very much from me, Vicky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Uh, goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. And thanks again to those guys at Positive Internet who host this podcast, the world's number one podcast. Um, we'd also like to congratulate Steve Carell from, uh, the American office, um, who won a Golden Globe. Yes, congratulations, Steve, and obviously everyone involved with the American office. And, um, <clears throat> for our American listeners, if you haven't checked out the American office on NBC, it's dynamite. It really is a cracking show. I don't know if you're a fan of the original, but if you are, or even if you're not, just watch it. It's great. It gets better and better week by week. It, it's, it's absolutely, hilarious. it's absolutely brilliant. That's, uh, NBC, I think that's Thursday nights, isn't it? After My Name Is Earl. That's gotta be the first time a Golden Globe has been won by two different people for the same character. I think you're probably right, mate. Cheers. Hey, congratulations again for winning it all those years ago. Two. One, all right. two. I don't need to mention one, two. Bye. Mention. Hello, and welcome to another Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. The ninth in the series of twelve podcasts we're doing for free. Absolutely free of charge. We're getting, um, we've, we've already done over sort of two and a half million downloads. We'll probably do four million downloads by the end of the series. If I had a quid. I oh. don't even want to discuss it, Rick. You are gutted, I'm aren't you? absolutely furious, because I said to you when we studied this, I said, why, why, you were going, oh, let's give something free back to the fans, and I was saying, it's not worth it, they don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, <laughs> you demanded it, and I wanted you to did. pay, I wanted to, I wanted to charge crazy money for I've it. I've been a fool. We've had about, r something like 6,000 emails as well. If we could we'd channel this to good, because you yeah. know what I mean, every, th this internet has been set up, billions and billions and billions of dollars go f uh, on this, uh, uh, um, cyber highway, back and forth, doing doing good stuff, communicating, sending people into space, commerce, and people, hundreds of thousands of people are sending me pictures of Carl as a monkey. I know, exactly. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's not what this, this system was created for. Thank you for all your uh, emails as well. That cost us as well, a little bit, because they're going through the website, which costs us a little bit of money. But it also costs me my precious time, <laughs> having to wade through the crap <laughs> that gets sent to us. Thanks to, uh, uh, Kieran, um, Gabriel from Merseyside, who sent me a picture of, uh, Carl as Bruce Willis. It's the effort. They, we'll put all these up on the website. Um, David Weinstein has, uh, has started his own t-shirt range, I Could Eat a Knob at Night, and, uh, Paul Devon has sent me this caricature of Carl, and it's brilliant. Again, I think they're wasting their energies. It's actually a brilliant painting of a little round, bald-headed mank, some sort of, like, freak creature. Yeah. Whereas he could have done a beautiful painting, but, but thanks to all those. I, uh, there's, I, I mean, I have actually waded through the emails, and I, obviously, again, like Ricky, I echo the thanks for sending in all the different questions and comments about the show, um, and there's so many, it's impossible to obviously even reply to them or talk about them, but a couple of that have struck me, uh, Emily from New York has asked, uh, Carl this, Carl, if you were on a, a, a sinking ship, or you were in a, bu a burning building, and you were with, uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us, I don't know why that's the case, but you can only save one of us. Yeah. Who would you save? Would it Is be it, Ricky or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, okay. Possibly. And we're, we're trapped and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing. <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he forms. dies. So he's yeah. got, so he's, he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously me. Um, it's hard to say, isn't it, at this point? What, because Steve's situation. in the room, you mean? Well, no, <laughs> just, just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. Okay, well, let's say we're on a, we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're gonna have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under, you know, you know, in 30 seconds, okay, this ship's gonna go under and drag you down and you're gonna die, right? Yeah. Uh, and our legs are trapped and you've got enough time to <laughs> untangle one set of legs. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. Just have to make a choice. Terrible. A terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, no, listen, this is- We don't around for long, he's gonna drown in 30 seconds, we'll, we'll get him. <laughs> so, <laughs> bear in mind this, Carl, you are gonna be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais, and who knows how long that's gonna take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's gonna be going on, the comments, the wind-up- And do you honestly think that he's gonna, if there's any provisions, that he's gonna split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's gonna have drunk all the water, and it's only gonna be about half an hour in. <laughs> the food's gonna be gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, of, oh. of the food he's gonna have to eat, the baked beans that you've got on board. Come or it's on. me, you know how generous I am, I'm always sort of oh, helping you Oh, there we out. go, Carl. He's, I think he's, uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on, think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The time, the time when 
we went for a coffee and we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p oh, and liking. you decided you didn't want to give it to me because it was only 50p. And oh. my point was, it's not a question of 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I wanted to be generous, that's my decision. But you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, Steve. It's, it's my decision who was But you just, it. you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but yes, but that was, that did not come to you, and you didn't pay for the free keg of beer, it was a promotional thing that was sent to you. Doesn't, it's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before, yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after yeah. however many years of service, yeah. which you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter, she wanted a camera. It's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free credit lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. Well, uh, listen, I'm stop arguing us. You're rocking the dinghy. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> have some of my cheese. <laughs> you imagine if he would, do you imagine he would ever say that? Do you imagine him ever, ever offering you any of his cheese? Are you going to save Carl, mate? I, I don't want to say. Can we say on the website? Can you just do a little explanation of why on the website? Can they. We we'll think about it and I might do a sort of a, a for and against or something and then sort of so the conclusion is Okay, all right. Something like that. Go all to right. rickygervais.com. The Ricky Gervais show on Guardian Unlimited. Hasta la vista baby. I'll be back. I'm here to tell you about Friday night comedies on channel 4. There's three great comedies. New Green Wing, it's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from creator of Father Ted. Get your ass to Mars. Friday night comedy this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. I'll be back. Uzi 9 millimeter. Cause they did a divorce. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Well, I've been waiting for this for a week. Um, it's a regular feature now. When uh, we read from Carl's diary, Carl decided to keep a diary. He's gone through with it. I can see it there. It's massive. It's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around uh, with him. And uh, he, uh, is, the pages are getting full up. You're, you're really keeping to this. Yeah. Right, it, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses, they hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. <laughs> an octopus is an odd looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I agree! I agree with that! <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Don't you remember the, I mean, if you're listening in America, they might not have made it over there. Is it the, what, the, the, what, the sort of like, the sugary ones with kids, like, is it Techikov or something? It's just some kid, uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like, a kid with like a blue jumper on and he's, it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, really awful sort of sugary. And what happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever, and the weird thing was. Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit mm. again. Mm. Carry on. Wednesday. Saw a homeless bloke. I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? Got on the tube to Camden. Read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've seen more dead hedgehogs than alive ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake and Ricky said I can't play pool if my hands are all sticky from there, cake. It was the sugar, it was, and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, and then was gonna pick up pool cues and touch things and I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands, you're not a cat. 
This turned into an argument when I said I didn't want to wash my hands. Why didn't he? Disgusting. He goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands and then squeezes <laughs> my head. I know I prefer to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice. <laughs> Was gonna do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learnt enough today. What have you learnt? Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Was on my way to my mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station but realised I needed a wee. Was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog who was bumbling his way through the walkway came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. I shouldn't have let him go first as he took ages and it would be my stop soon. The dog waited outside the cubicle. I was going to stroke it but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't. Don't know why, why not? Is. Because something to do with, uh, the owner should be the only one who, who sort of deals with that dog and you shouldn't f Well, sort of you shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. <laughs> no, but, but just because, you know, if you, if you stroke it and that, it, it might like, like me and want to go off with me and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not totally sure, but I just thought- Are you not- uh, <laughs> The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. <laughs> few people have sent this in, including Paul the Party Animal Parker. I wonder if, um, anyone else in his school- I mean, for some reason we've just assumed he's in school. I don't think there's any actual proof of that. But I do you think- I reckon he left in June and he's doing sort of bits and pieces, but he's still not a party animal. Do you think- I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that- He can hold down a job, um, he often arrives late. Sure. And the, and the boss who's in over will go, Parker, you're late again! He goes, yeah, talk to the hand. Yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he, c you know, he'll just happily say, listen, I can, I survive on four hours sleep. Yeah. Sometimes I go to work, I've not slept at all. But I think he comes in with his, uh, uh, uh headphones blaring, right, on a, on a skateboard, yeah. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy-duddy bloke goes, you, you stupid idiot, you can't, and then he goes, he goes, chill out, man, and in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. <laughs> yeah, he is just like, he just can't resist it, cause he's yeah. just, he's, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul uh, and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, the headline is this, female kidney turns lumberjack onto housework. Right. Now, a Croatian lumberjack apparently has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs, like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's nonsense. Mm. It's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell the newspapers about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort of medical nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, that, that you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. <laughs> exactly. It's like those old sto horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand yeah. and you go around killing. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as, as a person. Say like how they can do, um, face transplants now. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have? If if you have something done to your face and you go, you know, it's burnt or whatever, or something happens to you and you need well, a people, face transplant. Well, if you change, if you totally changed your appearance, then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you. Yeah, but I, so I mean, if you gave yourself the head of an elephant, soon you wouldn't you wouldn't be yourself. But because I wouldn't of the, have it. I wouldn't have that. That's what I'm saying. If they had a catalogue. Yeah. And they said, here's some faces you can have, pick which one you want. Yeah. Would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what? I don't really like the look of any of them. Can I just wait for a better face? Or at this moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have in no, the No, they face do now because of the face transplant thing. But who are these people putting their face up for? Uh, they wait till someone. Yeah, I know, but at some point. Well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm gonna have it. You- <laughs> You have to <laughs> I wanna see what I'm having. Because I could end up with anything. You mentioned elephant's head. What- do you know what I mean? Whose head are they gonna use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. But <laughs> where did this come from? Where from his mind. Where, where are these faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to- to put well, all these- Maybe this is why it won't catch on. 
I don't know. <laughs> this is extraordinary. You've created in your own head the existence of this pamphlet, and now you're defending it even though we don't know it even exists. And you're this skull on a- on a hospital bed going, I'm not having that, I don't like the look of him, he looks a bit shifty, yeah, I don't like that, oh no. Can I ask this now? Let's say you- we were both- we passed away sadly in something terribly tragic. Um, the nation's- it mourned, it, you know, it's, it's terrible, it's like one of the great national disasters, but you- at the same time, you survived the accident, okay, but your face is hideously disfigured. You can take either Ricky's face or mine to have. I'm surprised you're asking this though, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like any of them is like a great option. Oh, thanks. And this is what I'm saying about the catalogue. If, tho if those two were on offer, I might go, do you know what? Pop in again tomorrow. <laughs> Bring in another booklet. <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. This is from Anne Marie Melvin in Amsterdam. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, It'll probably grow up all right. But there are some mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test- testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time- does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. But, yeah, but what I mean is- <laughs> But what I mean is there's- there's certain things that- I, I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our- in our avenue, right, on the estate, who- when it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because because its man was was a bit of a rumman, um, you know. Rumman, where, where's that? No, just just like you know, she liked going out and having a fag and like having a drink, and she's never at home. It's the one who had the the horse in the house, sure, right? which I don't want to go over. Sure, it's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house, <laughs> but uh, she had a kid, and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good-looking kid. Mm. Right? Which was a surprise, because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out, and she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably, like, one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything <laughs> else was always sort of second, second down and what have yeah. you. But suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went... <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> 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 It looked, <laughs> it looked rough already, right? <laughs> and all that, that just happened because <laughs> that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So like, it, it used to, it had like a patchy head, um, it's a- It, it what? It had a patchy head? A patchy head, it's just sort of, uh, sort it of wasn't, it, it wasn't a North American Indian, what do you mean, a uh, patchy head? Just, just his hair was patchy, he used to chase sort of cars and stuff. <laughs> God, sorry, what do you mean? He just that's what he did for his. The, sorry, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no, <laughs> but but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, <clears throat> what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm he, guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go. Yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid. Can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did no, you? that time when I was in, in <laughs> Wales and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that. Yeah. And I just picked up a big rock, right? Chucked it off the edge and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed the fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by like inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or like off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life. For you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, Yeah. Isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, Hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm gonna chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. <laughs> that's a little mantra. Right? All right. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that. <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> Great. There's the advice for you, Anne-Marie. I love that. Good luck, just let your seven-month-old baby roam about. Hey, fool! Don't give me no back chat, sucker! 
I ain't here to mess with you, I ain't getting in no plane. I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Hmm. There's three great new comedies. New Green Wing, Yeah Fool, that's nearly ready. My Name is Earl, and The Egg Crowd. That great new comedy from the creator Father Ted. Sucker. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4, fool. Switch it on, or I'll be around your house. You stay up all night shivering, could you be so mad scared? Fool. Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just, they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone who, for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. Philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Um, cause there's a, I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um. Is it old though? <laughs> <laughs> you know the Chinese proverbs don't age well. Um, it's something about, uh, oh, everyone. Everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent, right? And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there and that. I like the Chinese, there's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about, um, too many... Chinese cooks spoil the broth. Why, well, why is, well that's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but <laughs> I heard it was too many cooks Well, it spoil. was all, it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite, um, uh, uh, on the same subject is, um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean, it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let, you let 12 people in the room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised. Whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> Well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, this is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. Well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other I'm gonna, I'm communities? I'm going to throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them. Okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back. I can look at them and go, "What are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like the camel, you go lose the ump. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um. And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this, it getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? <laughs> it says- Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. <laughs> no, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but yeah. I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've, you've said, you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. <laughs> I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? <laughs> oh, God, you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe? Um, what, what are they adding to, to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I thought, it? No, but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. Well, they, well they, no, because they work. That the only reason is that they survived. They passed on their genetic material and evolved and was chosen 
by by nature. It was but selective. They, but there seems to be a lot. The, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. Do you think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's I'm a just lot saying, of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you you do, you get it down to like eight animals that represented. All of so um, Okay, who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, "Hang mm. on a minute, We've, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown and have a clear out." <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything. Yeah. To be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe. With Noah as well. You well, believe you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to to cage two of every species. You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's it's out there in book form. Um, Brilliant. Uh, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. <laughs> It was this, um, airline, and, um, he was having a lot of problems and, and, and What, a pilot's the... too tall? Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas uh, were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. th there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because, um, I don't know what it was about, it was over money or whatever. Yeah. And the- Well, get, get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but- well, But what else could you pay something in, well, Rick? Well, peanuts. Anyone... So, okay, peanuts or, or fruit, yeah. So anyway, the, the boss- of the airline, the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. right? But the problem is with a lot of these planes, mm -hmm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he was like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't, there's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. As, is it, as, this a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads, but the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that we're struggling here. We but how can they get, but if they, yeah, but it's just, it was just the pilots that were striking, was it? Yeah, the pilots were striking, yeah. So the, all the ground staff and luggage handlers and all that was okay in the cab. They, they were fine, it's just pilots right. were, were not pilots. happy with the deal and what have you. Yeah. Well, just, just close it down. No, no way well, you can't do that, no, Rick. Can't, of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune just, if he closes it down. Yeah, yeah but what, one plane's not gonna make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's oh, all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. Yeah, I know, exactly, so if he's only got one person he can trust, <laughs> knock it on the head. No, 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 <laughs> no, what's the point? You've gotta keep going, you can't just nip stuff in the bud like that. If you, if you got a dream, keep it alive. I know, but not with one plane and your son. So anyway, I don't know. Well, like, but, but that's that's the least of his problems, Rick, because he's got his son, who's a brilliant pilot. He's the only guy he can trust. But it, it takes two people to fly. Well, you the can't plane. fly then. So the son, he's mm. flying the planes and that. He's getting worried for his dad because of his business. It's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry it? about it. We've found someone who you can work with. Um, okay. And he's like, but I, I get past the picket line because you know they know I'm your son anyway, and they'll leave me alone. But any other pilot, they're going to start giving him grief. They're tearing him to shreds. Yeah. Said, so don't worry about it. Unless he could swing over the heads of all the strikers. He said he's staying over at near the sort of quarantine area where oh, all yeah. the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right, okay. They won't be looking in there, they won't no, bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, well, there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot, that's why. I'll see you, uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Like, he'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah, sure. So anyway, he gets in there, he meets them. At first, little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with, but why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep a job. Not with one plane. Not so, with one plane. anyway, what happens is, the strike's going on, he's flying, he's yeah. got his mate with him flying, helping out. Who's his mate? What's his the mate's flights, name? The flights are brilliant, right? Everybody's loving them, they can't believe how smooth they are. Sure. The, mm. You know, the shares are going through the roof, everybody's like wanting oh, to fly. Plane. this one plane, this oh, one plane one they've plane. got. plane, that wouldn't make any difference! Everyone's saying, you know, it's a, it's only a small plane but it's worth getting on there And it's a can. small plane sure, as because well. because it's a great, it's a great oh, experience. gone under, I'd have thought. There's so no anyway, way they can keep that. Alive. Apparently they can. So they're keeping yeah. this, uh, this plane up in the air and what have you, and everybody's, yeah. you know, booking the holidays. It's almost like the favourite bit of the holiday, they're loving the flights that much. Why? Just, just because it's really good flights. Just I a great, just a great flight. what difference. Apparently it's a great flight. It's it just, makes. It's so so anyway, understand what difference it makes. Everyone's happy. Then one day mm. what happens is a little bit of, uh, a bit of a problem. Oh uh, dear. You're not, you're not gonna tell us that, that sort of co, co-pilot Coco is, he's not able to make it to work, is he? Well, well, what oh. happened is, uh, one woman who was on the, on the plane got a bit peckish, right? Right. And said, uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, I'm a little bit peckish, have you got any sort of nibbles and that? 
she went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich. You want something, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just no, like a bag of nuts or something. Well, nuts, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So, no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, look, we've, <laughs> we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich. Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. A sandwich is quite a big meal. Like, I just yeah. want some nibbles. Just want some nibbles. nibbles. Well, that, that's not available. So Done. I can't, End the story. Can't get you nuts. She said, well, why aren't there any nuts? She said, well, you know, the airlines had problems and stuff, and maybe that was one of the cutbacks. We've never took the nuts back on. Yeah, sure. So, she wouldn't just leave it. She wanted her nuts, right? She's having a lovely flight and everything. She said, I can't, cannot complain about the flight. The <laughs> no, flight sure. is brilliant. Yeah. Whoever's yeah. up there flying this place doing so a dynamite job. She's doing a great job, but I need some nuts. Right. Anyway, so the woman's there aren't are any. Very demanding woman. There aren't any. <laughs> it's a very demanding woman. There aren't any. Look, she's paid big money, right? She's probably in first class. She wants nuts, she's gonna nah, get nuts. there aren't any. Leave it. If she has to force her way into the cabin to get nuts, she's gonna get well, nuts. Well, she can't go there because she'll be shot. Because so with, with, with security problems and that, there's no way she could ever go to the cockpit. That, it, that would never happen. So she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit, right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So Let's go home. <laughs> So she's going, you can't, can't have any, no, no. We know, she's we going, understand now there's a dispute so, over So nuts. she said, she said, well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. You can't have eaten them yet. I want you, some. You I'm not go, over. No, no. I know this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying, you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm going to go over because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and, no and the way. pilot can well, hear all this anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Yeah. She gets a glance in. Little monkey sat there with headphones. Fucking bollocks. Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, do register on rickygervais.com. We'll be having to email you and tell you, um, what's happening when we finish this run of podcasts. We might have, um, some, uh, downloads. At the moment, we're working on, um, animating all the monkey newses. Um, so, uh, look forward to that. The absolute bullshit that is monkey news in all its glory. Um, this was hosted by Positive Internet. Great guys. The great guys that host the world's number one podcast. Cheerio from me, Ricky Gervais, and Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Hello, welcome to the tenth podcast in a series of twelve, Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And, of course, Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, um, thanks for all your emails. We've really started a community here, I think. Yes. We're all brought together by one aim. The, the the fascination of the brain of Carl Pilkington, yes, basically. Yes, absolutely. There's I mean, thousands of people who are equally as obsessed as we are with it. I d really don't know why it's called the Ricky Gervais Show anymore. I mean, I was I was cynical at the beginning, but it's it's farcical. Um, welcome to the Carl Pilkington Show. Well, people say they'd like to hear more from you and I, but I don't see why when you've got uh, do you know this what I feel in the room. Like, I feel like the ringmaster, but the real star is the shaved monkey in a jar that <laughs> yes, we bring out. Do you exactly. know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that's it. That's the star of the show, you know. Yeah. Well, we've, uh, we've had loads of emails, actually, and we've had one from, uh, Nige, who's done this brilliant cartoon of Carl on the beach. I, I think we should sell those as postcards. Um, but someone's beaten us to selling, uh, uh merchandise. If you go to, um, uh, www.cafepress.com forward slash Mr. Pilkington, someone is selling everything with Carl Pilkington's head on it. Now, these are bootleg goods. We're not making any money from it, but I'm strangely proud. I just love to see... Millions of people wearing a little t-shirt or a baseball cap or drinking out of a mug with his little round head on it. He's made a clock, which is perfect because it fits absolutely, you know what I mean, the sides of the head go right to the edge of the clock because it's perfectly I'd round. like to see maybe as, as well those, um, sort of rubber or plastic face masks that you can buy for Halloween with just Carl's oh. face. Oh, just millions of people <laughs> yeah. all look like Carl. Oh, that would be amazing. What a world that would be. Cheers for that, love. Yeah, it's Carl Pilkington here, just, uh, telling you about Channel 4 on a Friday. You've got, uh, new green wing, right? That's, that's nearly ready. My name is Earl, and, uh, the It Crowd. I mean, sort of being in the comedy business and that, I think it's, it's fair to say I'm qualified to give me opinion, and these three things are funny, so yeah, stay in, watch it, have a good night, have a nice little brew with it, do what you want, at the end of the day, it's your life, innit? See ya. Carl Pilkington! The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Still to come, of course, Monkey News and Carl's Diary, excerpts thereof. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee, that question's for Carl, you... 
Yeah, okay, no, <laughs> fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's, yeah, that's broad well, to anything. Anim well, no, animal, any creature. Uh, insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong, I'm just thinking about one. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um... I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because- Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot, you know what I mean? Through wars and stuff. Well, Do you get an old one? If you get like an old one, that's about- yeah. Most of them something. have lived in a box in a garden for 52 years. No, you, but, you, but you get some that have been about- and even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of them have, well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two. Yeah. And I what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. <laughs> Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel, and I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought- yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good, as it? It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time, it never is. So I don't- I don't believe in- going back to places what do, what, what do you understand the question is? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back, you are that child again, you're in the body, you are the child, or you've got your adult um, head and experiences what? on, you know, you, you Rick, could- Rick, I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations, <laughs> no, let's be honest, but now that you've flagged I them up- I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but Too big for the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email to a podcast for our own amusement. Well, okay, well- Choose an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on, I think- let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again, how would you do it differently? There's- there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever, but then- you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's gonna happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book, is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently? What, what about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could, you could have a look at someone and just sort of look, like, uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does, the ghost of Christmas past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff or, what would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're oh. asking me to change that. I don't want to change Yeah, you're not, not changing, you're just change observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you This question, it, this is, yeah. it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna have to do this. It's impossible. Right, yeah, I nearly died once, didn't I? On a, uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right? Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you That's absurd. About? You're now saying- you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <sighs> well, and what? we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just gonna go back and watch something. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, cos I'm alright. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So- <laughs> I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've- I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the- the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, something unless it's like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Cos the thing is, say if there's one good moment when I was about six that I loved, mm. I'd then have to go through all the other twenty years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's just a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You just could go say, back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant workers in South China are wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. 
Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey, three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? Well, they just aren't on the, t the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, w I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't... I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh... I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that. But, um... I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants, like that, a pair <laughs> of nappies and that. And I used to have to, uh... Even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, because you'd fall in. Um... <laughs> <laughs> my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that, like a like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> that cats have and that. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> like that, but but it's that's that's you know that's the same sort of idea. And I'd go there, and uh, I'd do <laughs> my thing. And uh, you know, my mum used to say, "Oh, he's, he's going there. Don't look at him and that," because it put me off. You know, like cats don't like being watched when they do it. <laughs> When they go in their litter tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. Look, I tested it again. What are you, just like a little feral kid, just running around and going to the litter tray, covering it up and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, nobody <laughs> likes being watched and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that and everyone's looking at you, it's... I don't, I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has caught on. Has they're it all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, <laughs> and 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 they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, it's partly because there are 120 million peasants from China's vast rural areas who swarm into the cities for work. And so, you know, th that sheer number of people means that the trains are so overcrowded. I just don't. Th I mean, what, what? What are we getting to? You know what I mean? What What's going on in the world that this is happening? I know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't. I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. If you've got 125 million people, yeah, going but not back. everybody wants to go at once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are, like, at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first, but this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented, then, the Chinese? Just loads of stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well, loads of stuff. I was gonna ask you, you seem quite educated on the subject, but... Um, they did them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was where you put mops on the feet of cats, was that right? Yeah. And they Brilliant. wander about the house, clean up and that, wash the floor for you whilst they're pottering about. Um... <laughs> They've done like hats with umbrellas on them. They've done. They've done. I mean, they've, they've, they're known for like coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but yeah, cats and mops is good as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a final um, mention of uh, one of the emails that came through from Phil Hobby in Falmouth in USA. Uh, he says, "Hello, chaps. Just wanted to let you know that I was at a party on Friday." And I bought two remixes of I Could Eat a Knob at Night on a CD. Let me tell you, I played them at the party. They were a huge success. They were a smash. By the end of the night, the party was hip to the words I Could Eat a Knob at Night. Uh, half of them were even singing along. So big thanks to uh, you, Ricky, Stephen, Carl. Now, what would be ideal, of course, I suppose, is one of the big superstar DJs, if they could drop that into their set. You know, a Carl Cox, a Fat Boy <coughs> Slim. Tongue. <laughs> Pete Tong, yeah. Boy Tong. He got power, and I'd love to hear him drop it. Maybe yeah. even, uh, and I suppose Westwood wouldn't be able to put that in. I know he's, he's more of a hip-hop guy. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, if we get, if you, if you, at any point ever hear I Could Eat a Knob at Night, uh, the remix, at any kind of club event, let us know. We'd love to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Well, now to one of our most popular features, um... I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sure. something? <laughs> 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 okay. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after twenty-five minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> 
I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. <laughs> Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I- Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket- I'm in the supermarket, all right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> Twenty-five minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us, as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style, rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this, as she's got a square head, and a <laughs> close-cut hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked alright, as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave ev everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? D gave that a go. Um, for about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that, you're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right, body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they, they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that, so I said, oh, I've come to have a dance, and like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary. As there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, <laughs> without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean like, say, say if, you know, they run out of ideas for TV programs and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a program on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is- Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is- <laughs> What I mean is, the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. Good. <laughs> That's what the programme's called. <laughs> it's the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> <I'm feeling laughs> Ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was- <laughs> Oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today, it was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you are one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> 
What do you mean? Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that word? Who is using that word? It was just W E W E. Let's call it a woo. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. <laughs> I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. <laughs> we got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. <laughs> it's like a child in like in one of those kids TV shows. I know. Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello Mr. Dilkington, <laughs> they said. <laughs> There was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this, as a fish having two heads ain't gonna solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. <laughs> Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. Good point, though, isn't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the tally only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever not sleep. Not sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. Don't know you put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? What's <laughs> going as you said, it would get a bit boring, you know, your sleep is your rest, your time off, it get, it, it, it helps you uh, detoxify, it helps you sort of um, think things through it, uh, on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like- that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm gonna waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this. Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise than going to the toffee shop. Hal <laughs> <laughs> All right, just doing a little advert for Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. I mean, I, I don't know what you're doing. You might be going out and that, doing something nice, which, you know, if you are, then fair enough, go out. But I'm just saying, if you're staying in, you've got new green wing, right, that's nearly ready. Got my name is Earl, the It Crowd, all funny stuff and that. Don't know about you, but, you know, I'll be staying in watching it, just having a bag of crisps and stuff, so... If you're staying in, put the telly on, do that. If you're going out, go out, have a nice night. See you later. Call Wilkinson! Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh. Jim Pantry Dive. <laughs> okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> <laughs> right, um. Ages ago, right, about about the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this gangster knocking about. And do you know how, like... Was he called Hairy Fingers? Do you know how, like, a lot of gangsters <laughs> like to get into gambling and that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, all these, all these peers and that, all these, all these mates who are, like, gangsters and stuff, mm. they've all bought horses, right, that they tech, you know, tech racing and they make money from them and that, don't they? Yeah, mm. So anyway, he and was Chuckles like- Chuckles the Seagull was no different. And, and he was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing to get into, I might, might get into a bit of that, right? So he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up, that's why he's sort of, it's a bit of a last minute- And the, and the jockey turns up and it's fine, he's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent, okay, well that was so, another podcast. So anyway, so- um, please listen- Oh, hang on, there's more, there's more. Oh, come on. on. So, oh. so anyway, so, uh, this big race is coming up, he's, yeah. he's like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because definitely. I can make a lot of money out of me horse here. Choose the jockey wisely then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone, oh, yeah. sort it out, and yeah. what have you, so I can get in this race. So, yeah, the jockey so club. Loads his of mate's people. like, yeah, alright, I'll, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's, there's, there's always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. 
So anyway, so he comes Was that back true in the 50s as well? Absolutely. It's always been it's true. It's always been true. It's always, it's always been, been true. true. There's, like no, there's no lack of jockeys. So- it's sort of close shot, people are trying to do it and they don't make the grade, so... But in the 50s, from your knowledge, there was never, there was not, like, in 1951, a shortage of jockeys for just one year? Absolutely never. I've known about <laughs> okay, that. Fine, I'm you, quite yeah. keen. Right. Go on. So anyway, right, so his mate says, look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey. Seems oh, odd, no, because Ricky's just weird. been saying... Oh, no, 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 he's no, just no, been no, saying no, there's no. not a problem. What do you mean? So... Just because the main problem was... Go on. A lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are, I won't get paid. You know, is a gangster. It's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse. I want it in the race. Sort it out. So they're like, oh, but boss. And he's like, don't give me any of that. Go exactly. They do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before. The big race, yeah. <laughs> left it to the last minute. Okay, but yeah. fine. <laughs> and, uh. He says, have you, have you got a jockey then? They're like, yeah, but, and he's going, D- don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but, and he's like, well, look. He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wa- yeah. So, yeah, uh, like, yeah. he's saying, has he ridden the horses before and that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly, and he's like, look, oh, brilliant. He goes, yeah, but mainly in, like, a in circus. In the, in the jing- No, like, in, in, the, in the circus and that. <gasps> he'd worked, he'd, he'd worked with horses and stuff. In the circus. It's fine. Yeah, so he's like, that's, fine. that's enough, that's, that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy, because circus- so People so are quite built, aren't they? They're, so, they're he said a bit so heavier than the jockey, because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, brilliant. Get him down there and that, right? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand? He wasn't worried no about point, it? No point. Not bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's putting all his, he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. So, right. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo- jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves that, too was, short, legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore in the circus and that, because it's, it's, it's comfortable with that, he's yeah, happy yeah. with it, do you know yeah, what I mean? That's what he's happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse, straight out of the trap and that, high speed, right? This, this jockey's got a really big grin on his face, he's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, who is this? Who's this jockey here? Yeah. It's amazing, never seen him before, and yet, look at him. But they can see his face, clearly. Anyway, gangster's happy and that, because he's, he's won. But I just want to say, the crowd, the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can, d- I mean, it's, it's Yeah, but he's so fast and what have <laughs> the you. The blur, it's a blur, it's all a blur, He's Rick. really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off and people were like, he's, he's gone, he's a goner. Right. But he's got such a good reach that he managed to grab hold <laughs> oh, of the- Oh, sure. Good reach, oh. And right. it, well, they could tell he was smiling, they could tell he was smiling, but they couldn't see the, the detail of his face, is that right? Just well, to clarify it's just, that? Well, it's, it's just blur and that. Sure, but they could tell teeth. he was smiling, yeah, 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 yeah. They knew he was happy. At the end of it, do you know, like, the winner sort of rides around the crowd bit? Yeah. Right? Sort of, you know, show off and what have you. Yeah. And all the women are there, and you know, like, women are all dolled up at these events. Sure. Mm-hmm. They've all got big, big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through on those hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one, one oh of the God. women, In one the of the women, oh particularly Carmen God. Miranda was very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. One of the women had, like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. some kind I'm of they're Cuban They're not real, woman. they're not real though, the hats, though, they're, uh, no, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not real fruit, is no, it? No, yeah. of course not, never. So but it, but so I don't really know who, I thought they wore those sort of, kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment but shows, I didn't realise they wore them yeah, at events. even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit and it's sort of joke, but but it's, it's fake fruit because it would, it would, it would perish, it would. Well, this, this jockey didn't understand that, he'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But what? why did the, why did the jockey suddenly? Why was he so desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. understand. So anyway, so meanwhile, the gangster's collecting his five hundred quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah. I don't understand. I still don't understand no, where the know. jockey would go. Everyone from. noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Because I want to. It was it up. was nineteen fifties, and that's where the saying comes from about you know, like in Cockney slang, five hundred quid is a monkey. He, he sort of put, he, you know, he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time so when- So this happened in this, in, in, in England? In this country, yeah, yeah in England. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact that Well, would that's it, we that always, you know, there's no time length on this monkey news, if you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back- Or if it's made up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's so, bollocks, uh, if you've got any in, bollocks, if it's actually bollocks, send please send it in. That's this week's monkey news. RickyGervais.com <laughs> Well, that's the end of, uh, the tenth podcast in a series of twelve. Only two more to go. Um, one more hour of the, uh, the drivel that is, um, the thoughts of Chairman Pilkington, or Dilkington, as he should now be known. 
Um, this uh, podcast was brought to you by Positive Internet. Those great guys at Positive Internet host the world's number one podcast. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. If you want to get in touch, remember it's podcast at rickygervais.com. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Hello and welcome to number 11 in our series of 12 podcasts with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello, uh, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, Carl, you have become a phenomenon, mm. okay? Right. This, uh, is a, a new story that's gone everywhere. It started, I think, in New York, Reuters, and then that's been taken up by every Reuters network everywhere. India, uh, all over Australia, England. Okay, here it is. The headline is, Podcast makes Britain an unlikely internet icon. Britain there, B-R-I-T-O-N. Okay? Now, this is, uh, the story by Mark Egan. And it's, uh, came out of, um, New York originally. Unemployed British radio producer Carl Pilkington has become an unlikely superstar by using the medium of podcasting for his bizarre statement about eating an animal's private parts. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was more about, like, that reality show. That, right. well, it says that here. It was during a discussion on yeah. the Gervais show about a reality TV show where contestants were asked to eat an animal's penis. Uh, Pilkington, um made internet history while talking about this it says right first he said he could not eat an animal's penis in the morning because he had a delicate stomach he then proclaimed using the british slang for penis i could eat a knob at night okay <laughs> his knob sound bite has become so popular that a google search for i could eat a knob at night yields more than half a million listings okay <laughs> among them are t-shirts featuring the slogan okay and pilkington's bald head Selling for seventeen dollars. Oh, why did I have to make a point about your bald head? I, I, I don't know. What's why, why is that getting a little mention? <laughs> wow! <laughs> that doesn't matter. See the t-shirt. Have a look at it. <laughs> what, what? What is bald? I'm not buying one then. It's not going to make any difference. Either you want a t-shirt with me head on or you don't. It's not an issue. <laughs> all it says is but among also, them are t-shirts featuring the slogan and Pilkington's bald head. I also liked it when it said Pilkington plays the village idiot on the Ricky Gervais show. Okay, now. Plays the village idiot suggests that he thinks you're a character, that character being a village idiot. The problem is, the fact that you're not a character, to me, suggests that you are just a village idiot. A global village idiot. Yeah. Mm. Now, Just on, uh, the, on the websites, though, when it said there's loads of websites about eating a knob at night. Yeah. Have they looked at each website and gone, yeah, that's to do with the podcast? Yeah. Or is it just like gays and that, saying, oh, I love a bit of knob at night? <laughs> It's a valid question. It's a valid question. That's why you're an internet icon, Carl, because you say things like that. After Gervais mused on the show that the soundbite could be used in a dance remix, it took just a few days for the internet to be awash with songs, using the soundbite as a hook. So what do you think of that, Carl? Oh, uh, well, I mean, is, is it big in, in India? Well, but, I don't know. It's all, it goes around the world. This is a story. I know, but I just can't the believe world. the problems that, if I was in India, I wouldn't be getting upset about someone in London talking about a knob at night with the problems they've got. Well, I don't think anyone's getting upset in India. No, He's just saying, saying that the information. I can't world. imagine people walking around India. You know, have you heard that song, Knob at Night? <laughs> I can't imagine that happening with the, you know, they're hungry in that and it's dusty and everything. <laughs> That's your going. image of India, is it? They're hungry and it's dusty. I, I, I assume it's, you know, the parts of India that aren't dusty and in poverty. There is a lot of poverty in India, but there is also, you know, yeah, but these it's, parts it's to the major civilization, and, uh, uh, and the people, uh, that, that live in apartments with, with, uh, uh, computers, they probably might tune in. But, but I don't think it's an issue all over the world, is it? Because there's some places where they eat dogs. They'd go, no, at night, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a bad thing. You know, why, why is that out on a t-shirt? I had one last Wednesday. <laughs> not, not an issue. What, what, what do you mean? No, no. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, again, if there are cannibals listening, if it's, you know, in places that, that you wouldn't travel to, and that they get hold of a little laptop and an iPod, and they listen to that, I can eat another night, then they're going, what's the problem? What's the big deal? We, all, we, we love a knob at night. Yeah, we love fun. a little knob at night, yeah. Bollocks in the morning, knob at night. That's the rule. But what about the fact that they're saying you're a phenomenon, a global phenomenon, because when you were, you know, a tiny little, um, round-headed mank mm -hmm. growing up in Manchester, you could not surely have ever anticipated that you would one day be described as a phenomenon, an international phenomenon. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I went to that school, you know, with a kid with a big head and webbed hands. <laughs> now he should be being talked about. <laughs> 
it? Well, it's maybe he doesn't want to be talked about. If if you've grown up with a big head and webbed hands, the last thing you want to be is talked about. He wants to he wants to put he on wants a pair to blend of, into society. He yeah. wants to put put on a bit of uh, a pair of mittens. And paint his head like a crash helmet, so people think, oh, it looks like a big head, but it's probably just the crash helmet. Yeah, just go about his business. Yeah. yeah. Unnoticed. He won't get stopped on a bike or anything. Yeah, but I say if you've got something that's a bit weird, use it. That's what we're doing. That's exactly what me and Steve are doing. We have got something that's a bit weird and we're using it. And I want to uh, speak to the people all around the world. Thanks for listening. But how famous can you make Carl Pilkington? Are you a journalist? Please write about this for people who probably haven't listened to Carl. Uh, t talk about Carl Pilkington. Put a little poster up in your window. I love Carl Pilkington. Print a badge. Give it away. Email your friends. Tell, uh, tell one person about this podcast and let them discover the, the amazing beauty that is Carl Pilkington's mind. Right. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'm here to tell you about Friday Night Comedies on Channel 4. There's three great comedies. New Green Wing, it's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from creator of Father Ted. Get your ass to Mars. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. I'll be back. Uzi 9 millimeter. Cause they did a divorce. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. As ever, Rick, there are hundreds and thousands of emails coming in. Um, people contributing all kinds of stuff, pictures as always, and uh, little video clips that I think might be of interest. And of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade Ramira. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean, your school experience was a bit iffy. You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, which is four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think they should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, to teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge. Uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out a bit as well. Just going like. <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what it, does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? Exactly. To be a human. Or, or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning. So, yeah. you know, get them out to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas. He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day um, and someone sent it in on email. Like, how uh, there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Woo, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't Get happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because- What do you mean, why not? Why did it- how did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like- Not dishwashers. What, you think that the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? They're gonna do stuff sort of half assed aren't they? Sure. On Boxing yeah. Day. So- it didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars and it, it, it got- you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't open properly. But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying mm. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been <laughs> no. floated up there. No, it's not. <laughs> what are you it talking about? It's, all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So- Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up at the space show in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want a bit. Who's going to do that? You know, that means. Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Th out of the Earth's atmosphere. So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey 
with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right, say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans, because they need one to steer it, one to, like, be going, yeah, we're all right. Yeah, one, one to make some hors d'oeuvres. One, one to one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They've got a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is, teach kids things about, say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking about ages ago, how would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better, um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst yeah. we're here? Because I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. <laughs> cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is think it's- there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still handful, millions of people a handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer. And yeah. that's, that's a problem. So, so what you I'm feel that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex into, wandering say, about, wandering London. Around. Just have them wandering around, just picking people off. That's what- just, just, you know, just sort of random and that. Cos I- I don't know- I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that, but all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go, oh, oh, Neil, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And Annie Nora's been, had her head bitten off by a- Whatever, I just yeah. think it, then it is survival of the fittest. Which yeah. is, we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They, 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 can, they can do too much now to keep people going. <laughs> they just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match, I think they're talking, have you ever been in a physical fight? Um, once that I can remember. It was over a, over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. That was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because, like, it's hassle, innit? Right? Relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh, I, I didn't uh, sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And, uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like, s sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco, <laughs> and, um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And, uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on, and I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it, <laughs> and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be doing with this, right? <laughs> You know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that, and saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right. So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> 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 oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right, and uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order. You know, I'm saying, what are you on about? So you, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven -year yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> but sorry, were you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink, and he just said, "Leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face." <laughs> So oh. I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved and all that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Two seven -year -olds. laughs> yeah. Why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Right? Wow, is it like a proper- <laughs> Sorry! This is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. I just, uh, so I'm- you put- you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that- what were you wearing? Football boots? I just boots? stood on it. Just- <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so- got a hole in it. But, so, so you're having a- and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got he- so arm little, locks and headlocks? A bit of wrestling and sho- shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go, right, I'm gonna break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down and and his tooth hit the sink. Mm. Right. And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like, I, I sort of left there and stuff and we had to go into assembly. Uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation saying, listen kids, you know, don't get into trouble because we're out there and we'll get you. Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, "Oh God, there's a copper here talking," and it like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just, I don't know what they're intending, what, what response they're hoping for, really. This is one from Rob. He just says, I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix? What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty, uh, redundant now. Yeah. The appendix is, used to be a, a, an organ that, that was packed with um, these uh, these enzymes that help break down things like cellulose, but because of our diet now and because the uh, you know cooking and uh, and other things, we we don't need to eat a lot of cellulose. We don't eat very very low grade things like 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 rabbits, for example, huge appendix and cecum, and they they use it to break down the cellulose. They actually eat their own. Uh, feces to get it through again but we get a lot of nutrients out of food now we eat very rich food so we sort of don't need the appendix and also when something goes wrong with the appendix if it bursts it can infect you and you can die from it so sort of what's the point in having it we don't need it and it can only cause us harm that was the question i think that rob was putting to you so now what are your thoughts on the human appendix so th- this is kind of what we've talked about before where he always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this before. And, and the thing that he's talked about is nothing like it. Yeah. There's, there, there's never... Uh, go on. No, but just like, um, in the way that we've messed with our body and we've messed with the world too much. Yeah. If we've got an appendix, we, we must need it. If it's dangling about, right? Well, no, because su- such is the human evolution is, uh, that, that, as you said before, you know, it's no longer based on survival of the fittest because we can we can fight nature and combat it. So our evolution, I- if you like, socially and, and everything else, it, it, it is is been much faster than our biological evolution. Yeah, but what, evolution. what I what I mean is we've we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way, and well, we, well, we have, have interfered. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't have done because it's, mm. it's the same way. Like uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer's no. Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way- Cos he's right, is it cos he's right? No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of like an ape to man- Yeah. At first they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this- cos I mean we started, uh, pl- you know, dabbling with a plane maybe hundred years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time sort right. of behind, Well I'll tell you now, we wouldn't have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? Goes wrong and that, right? They shut it down. They go, we're moving. <laughs> we go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah. It's a nightmare. <laughs> so we can't go to there. We go somewhere else. So you find another planet, wherever it is, right? Yeah. Wherever um, it is, yeah, easy. Something that I've always wondered about, if we do that, do we start New Year's or do we carry on, what, do you know what I mean? Do we say, oh, it's still 2006, or do we go, oh, it's world, it's world new, or whatever, yeah. new world. 
That is definitely the first priority. It's year one. Right, we've sorted that out. Right, now- Well, it depends, doesn't it? Once you- Because a year might not be the same on this planet. We'd sort that out, right? We'd sort out what what year it is and that. Well, no, no, Um, no, no, what I'm saying is, we'd have to start again anyway because the planet might not take one year as we know it to- to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day because that's how long it takes for Yeah, but the- we'd have to carry on, as we know, because we don't want to start doing longer days and that, otherwise it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No! I'm well, doing we wouldn't a 28 have a hour day. We wouldn't have a choice. A day is how long it takes no. the planet to, but to, a day to is, turn, a day and is, a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, the but, sun but once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they, in Iceland and that. But they don't go, well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Uh. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's, we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go, what time is it? You go, it's 20 past No, no, no. We use that, that, because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to, 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 I, to I've never worried about it like that. I've just always Well, no, I'm telling you, because well, you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to, to, yeah. what would you mean? The way that, what? No, I'm, I'm just saying that's fine and everything, but if when I was born people said there's 26 hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, not yeah, gonna, we could have made that by long an hour is, yeah. We could have made hours s- shorter and get 26 Well, in. they're saying they're going to do that. Because, well, no, because, they're not. No, they are, because no, there's not. so many people in the world. Yeah. This is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs, keep shops open, take on more people, everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right. Say if there's 28 hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be 24 hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have, you'd have like, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's like twenty past, uh, t- twenty-five or whatever. <laughs> well, you're, you're not making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying- The Earth would still take twenty-four hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute, I want, uh, there's more interesting territory here. Let's say we've got to our new planet, wherever that is. It takes fourteen hours- Okay, to, you know, to, to do its turn. So we call that a day, right? So we've now yeah. agreed that 14 hours is a day. But nothing, it's gonna take ages to get the town centre built and that. If people are, if you've only got- I'm going with you, I'm defending you here! All right. So we've got, so we've got that. We've established what the day is, we've established what a year is, right? It's year one, it's Carl year one. What next, all right? We've got all the people, we've moved to another planet. You said you had a bunch of other questions. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only, yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth, that's asleep all the time. Yeah, that's got the same watch as us. It's doing <laughs> yeah, what it wants. But it, it evolved differently, didn't it? It yeah, evolved but, but on it's, the, but it's on living now in 2006, so wake it up. Right, you can't <laughs> get away. You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. <laughs> Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> well, Carl's diary. You didn't ex- yeah. explain what it was. Carl's diary. Actually, as some one person said, if we are going to get it published, we could maybe publish it as the diary of an idiot. Very good. So, um, you know, a little riff there on one of the most famous diaries. Sunday, got up. Sunny day. So went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling. Uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I- I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, p- p- <laughs> it's sort of like going. I'm 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 content. I'm. Uh, it it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go. Well, um, Mr. Meadows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. <laughs> Won't happen. Won't no, <laughs> you don't happen, whistle it, yeah. when you're sad. The other place you hear, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going. I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating. I'm whistling. <laughs> <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake, waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, we're just sat there looking, sort of going, "Oh, what's going on?" <laughs> I don't know. I- how, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much. They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. 
<laughs> the old excuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Got to phone my mum. <laughs> there was a marathon type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Uh. <laughs> Why were you walking on the same route? Because uh, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, and, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road. They're going, look at the bloke with the bald wig. <laughs> He's yeah. carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old t-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them, but the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> <laughs> On the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. What's a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about them ages ago where, um, someone was, uh, walking down the street. Yeah. And he sees somebody who looked a bit like him. And, no, this was weirder than that. Go right? on. Um, he, he he remembers, like, going down that street as a kid on his bike, whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of, he's walking down the street, going out to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling, he goes, that's weird. Looks at it, it was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> So Don't it's like a time. Talk shit. What do you mean? It was him as a kid. This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just. Um, well, it's impossible. It's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no. It's, it's not even that's impossible. So it's just some kind of time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's Diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. More from uh, that next week. Hey, fool! Don't give me no back chat, sucker. I ain't here to mess with you. I ain't getting in no plane. I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Hmm. There's three great new comedies. New Green Wing. Yeah, fool. That's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the Egg Crowd. They're great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted, sucker. Friday Night Comedy. This Friday on Channel 4, fool. Switch it on or I'll be around your house. You stay up all night shivering because you'll be so mad scared. Fool. Oh, well, it's that time now. Yeah? It's the big one. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right, it was this, uh... Monkey? This fella, right, who, uh, he had a problem with his eyes, right? Yeah. So, uh, he goes to the doctors and he goes, uh, oh, I've got a problem with my eyes. And he goes, yeah, they bad them, right? <laughs> he goes, uh... It was in America, you know, like, how you have to pay for, for medical stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, oh, if, if, if I fix them, it's going to be, like, ten grand, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, but I haven't got the money, doctor. He goes, well, I can't help you then. You know, there's a lot of people with bad eyes like them. Can't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. So he goes, oh, it's getting worse. I can't do anything. So anyway, so he goes home. Is that the price of human eyes, is it? So he goes home, he's looking in the paper, right? And he, he sort of sees in the adverts at the back. And uh, there's a little advert there saying, cheap doctors. Right. <laughs> no, <bollocks. laughs> oh, no. No. So he's thinking, oh, maybe that's maybe that's what I uh, maybe that's what I need, right? So he calls him up. Woman's there. She's like, wait, what can I do? He goes, I've got bad eyes and that. She says, oh, come in tomorrow. We'll sort them out. She's like, brilliant. I'll see you then. Right. So he goes down there, and uh, he says, right, you know, I, c I can hardly see. My eyes have got in really bad state and what have you. Right. Need to have them sorted out. I don't know what you do. Whatever you do, right. I need now, doing. His eyes are so bad. Can he see the doctors? He can 
Um, not really. He's sort of he's squinting. squinting and that, but you know. So, uh, so he's like, uh, "Do I need to see the doctor to you know have a word and tell him what problem?" She's like, "No, I don't. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about just, it. No, uh, I'd, I'd I'd be comfortable if it's a just a just you know just let me inject you and uh, we'll knock mm. you out and we'll we'll get on with it. Can, and it's like, get well, the it's, in. can I just tell you something about um, chimps as well? Just before you continue, Go on. you know they don't have opposable thumbs. Now, why are opposable thumbs useful? Really? Well, to, to grip something, to do anything like you know even simple. Uh, stuff like writing, so let alone surgery. So without an but opposable thumb. But can I just thumb, check now? So if I was a doctor and I was doing any form of difficult surgery, would I need opposable thumbs? You'd need opposable thumbs to be a doctor. And without opposable, you couldn't do anything. You Th could. Thanks it, for clearing that because up. Because because um, uh, the, the opposable thumb allowed something in our evolution called the precision grip. Right. So without that, you couldn't do anything. I'm just glad they've got that cleared up. Thanks. So anyway, so he's had the injection, he's nodding off and what have you, right? his eyes are sort of closing and that, he hears the door open, he, he sort of just sees this little fella come in and he's like, hello doctor, and he's trying to like, make a chat with it, sure. but like, he, he's just it. nodding off. Uh, no, well, just, oh, he's he never called a doctor. He, he these, these people have done seven years medical Deeply training. Respected people. How could you say, call it it? So anyway, he thought, oh, it's weird he didn't answer, but you know, doctors can be quite moody, you know, they're highly intelligent, they don't need Especially idle. little airy ones. Well, just idle chit chat. There's no room for that, do you know no, what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah, but you know, if I, if I'm going in to have my eyes done, I want a little bit of idle chimp chat. So anyway, time passes, right? Yeah. Uh, he sort of wakes up and, uh, he opens his eyes, right? And, uh, it's brilliant, he can't believe it. Oh, he's a perfect. He's had, he's had, he's had the op. He, he can't believe the sight. He's like nurse, right? And the nurse comes in because I can't believe it. This is brilliant. I've never had this such good sight. Do you know what I mean? Even when I was a baby, yeah. And my eyes were new. Yeah. I didn't see this good. Great. So she's like, well, you know, that's. that's you realise the nurse is a panda. That's that's what we do, right? So uh, he said, right. So can I just see the doctor and just say thanks and that? And she's like, well, to be honest, you know, he's he's specialising what he does. Uh, there's a lot of What work. a load of bollocks this is getting. <laughs> Please. Like, where did you get this from? No, come on, let's hear the end of the news. There's a well. lot of, there's a lot of, like, operations he's got to do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, leave him to it, he's just having a kip, you know, I'll, I'll let him know that you were grateful. Yeah. Uh, you know, pay us a check, off you go, go and enjoy looking at stuff. Yeah. So, uh, he says, uh, he says, no, I just, just, what's wrong with that? I just want to see that. So no, like, no fine. leave it, just leave. Yeah, exactly, like, leave it. And he's like, it's he's like, yeah, but I can't, you know, I, I, I want to thank him, so he's done such a good thing for me. So they're getting into a bit of an argument and what have you, and it, the voices are raising, right? Mm. Uh, door gonna opens. Gonna wake the doctor up. Well, mm. that's what they did. They woke it up, right? They so, will get uh, it. So the door opens, right? <laughs> Little monkey comes out, oh. and, and he's like, "What's what's what's going on here? It's hospital. Why is the why is the uh, a monkey knocking about?" Yeah. So the woman woman said, well, "What what do you mean? He, he's the doctor, right?" <laughs> so sh so he's like, "You are having a laugh, aren't you?" She goes, "Look, don't complain. You, your eyes are sorted, yeah. you know." The doctor's done it. What, what, what's the problem? He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have come here. She said, well, what do you mean you didn't know that? She said, the advert in the paper you read, it's uh, like, chimp doctors. That is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. That really is the worst. He's what, and he, so he, because his eyes were so bad, he thought it said cheap doctors. He saw the advert and, and it said, it said chimp doctors, but because his eyes were bad, he just saw it. What journal is this in? It was, it was years ago, because it sort of says how the monkey sort of carried on working for a few years. Uh, he couldn't do anything then about just it. He had to, to play it. golf. It's absolute bollocks. He's there's no to... way. There's the worst. I mean, it's not even worth talking about. So. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the most ridiculous monkey news you've ever heard, and that's saying something. Chimp, chimp doctors, cheap. It's easy mistake. <laughs> well, that's the end of another podcast. That's uh, week eleven. We've got one more to go next week. So uh, go to wickedgervais.com, see some of the things we've been talking about, register, so we can let you know what's happening when we're, when we're back. Who hosted this podcast? It was the great guys at Positive Internet who host the world's number one podcast, The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, bye bye and Carl Pilkington. Uh -huh. Hi, Ricky Gervais here, with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Welcome to uh, the final episode in our series of 12 podcasts. I say final, it's final of 12, but um, we may be carrying on. Go on. Well, next week we're going to try and uh, uh, do another one to continue this for at least a little while. Um, we may have to charge a small fee for it because uh, it'll cost us money um, and Carl is uh, unemployed. But we, we mean a real tiny little fee. Um, but... Uh, Hopefully, we will be back next week. Now, um, we're not sure where it'll be. It'll probably be on iTunes, but just go to rickygervais.com 
and we'll guide you there. Hurrah! Yay! Um, and thanks for listening for this long and uh, supporting us. I hope you continue to support us. Go on, continue to support us. Yeah, particularly Carl, who has no money whatsoever and is desperate. He's a desperate man. Is I hope right, there's Carl? no one out there going, oh, they're charging for it now. But, you know, people forget we gave 12 for free. This is it. So quickly people forget. We're big shots. Yeah. Well, Carl's not, but, um, you know, we are, aren't we? Exactly. I mean, we, yeah, we were generous, but we're not that generous. We're not, we're not mad and Carl needs a, a little bit of money. Look at his little round little head. He's like little tiny Tim over there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Look at him sitting there. Carl, you've had a good week? Uh, it's been alright, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> well, um, more, well, more of that next week. You have to, <laughs> you, but you'll have to pay for it now. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not buzzing because, uh, we just had our photograph taken to enter the Guinness Book of Records for the greatest downloaded podcast of all time. We went along to The Guardian and the press were there and they took a little picture of his round head, didn't they? Yeah. But I, I don't know. Why, why should I be excited about it when it's just? Is I mean, it you always wanted to be in the Guinness World of Records. Not, not really. No, I, I've got. I, I've been looking at the. Uh, we, they presented us with the, the um, this year's, and I've been looking through it, and there's some fascinating ones. I used to yeah, get. Yeah, but this that's, that's what I'm saying though. There's loads of things in there that I used to go to. Like I looked at it online the other day to mm. see if you know what's on there. You click on it, the home page that you get when you click on Guinness Book of Records. It's a fellow with the most ear hair, right? <laughs> Looks amazing. So that to me, is what the Guinness Book of Records is about. So you're impressed with the bloke who just happens to have the most ear hair? No, but it's commitment. He could have, he could have shaved it off, but he didn't. He left it. Yeah, we, no, it's less commitment. But we, yeah, that just grew. We, we actually bothered to do a podcast. All right, forget that then. The one with the rings on the neck where they stretch the neck so their head's tall. That's commitment. If that mm. didn't work out, he's stuck with that head and he didn't even get in the book. <laughs> you're stuck with that head and you have got in the book, so be happy. Uh, what if it's a stitch up? What if you're under roundest head? I'd be a bit annoyed. Why? Just because I, d I don't. I mean, have you got a choice? Say, like the fella with, um, you know, the small man. Say if he's he's not happy about being small, he's trying yeah. to go about his life. He knows people are looking at him, pointing at him, going, "Look at him, he's tiny." But does he want to be in the book? Oh, I think I think they've got to give their consent. Have they? Because if the, if if the smallest wasn't willing to be in there, they'd go. The second smallest man is so and so. He was willing to be in here. Yeah, but we, the smallest one is Frank, and he didn't want to do it. So again, he's in it without wanting to be in it. <laughs> no, but I don't know. <laughs> he's got you there, Rick. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they go around. I I, I think that you'd have to um, uh, be complicit in it for them to measure your head and say this is the roundest head on the planet Earth. Not, you know what I mean. But then, what do I do with that? That's what I'm saying. Is it something you put on a CV? I don't no, no. see the point in it. Well, I think you are the fellow with the roundest head, and I well, think a lot yeah. of people know that. Because also, I've noticed when people ask for a picture of you, they don't say, can I have a signed picture of Carl? They say, can I have a signed picture of Carl's head? Which is a weird thing to say about a human being, isn't it? They go, well, oh, look at his head. Look at his head, not look at his face. Or can I have a picture of him? They say, can I have a picture of, have you got a picture of Carl's head? Why, why are they allowed to Doesn't mention matter. that? And the thing is, like, we're, we're on some sort of broadcasting medium where you don't even see me, Ed, so it's not important. Well, I can't see you, Ed, because the mic's perfectly round and it obliterates it out like an eclipse. But what I mean is, it doesn't matter, does it? For doing what I do, it doesn't, it doesn't interfere in any shape or form. But the thing is, Carl, what people are fascinated with, and I've said it before, you've got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be charging for more information like that from next week. <laughs> We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's crazy. It takes us ages to go through them and, and read them. And we, are, we are going through them. We are reading them. Freddie Gerstrom from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. Sure. That's that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, innit? It's like it's become that's what you do now every <laughs> year. <laughs> every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And and you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing it's like how I've I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's Pancake Tuesday. No, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same same with this. You know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily, so we didn't we didn't have to go out. So I'd say, is he asking for advice? 
Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly you may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I remember, uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill Well, to it was, it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and, uh, you know, uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And, uh, I said, come on, come to the supermarket. She was like, no, I'm ill, you go. And I ate buying food, I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and there's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days, but... How would you, uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that. It's always been, like, a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her. And, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought she's all right. <laughs> um, been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p never back? never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that, um, <laughs> she liked me and that. And, um... What did I do? I think I did some work for her, did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink, because I was, I was doing that editing for her, in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, that you've not spent any money <laughs> on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> At least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English? Yeah, if he... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common even if he used real words no but he's talking english yeah no but his reference points would be just so far removed you know they're removed slightly when uh, uh if you saw two people talking about kierkegaard you don't you'd you'd i hear... wouldn't understand that exactly so remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, yeah, he'll he'll be saying oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion. Does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah. or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. What? Definitely, definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just I just think that a worm that's that's on the ground. Yeah. What's it got to offer me? He's, he's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's and English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can... You can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right? So... <laughs> you was, how would you have changed that? Just... Just more land. Fair enough. Now, why <laughs> why are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because was was because because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right, there's there's loads of that. You only have to like like you know I was in Malaga the other week, right, and you know you look in the sea, 
there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and there's just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh- you know, rights come in in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to them, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Con? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but, what, but what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> 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 the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Oh, pleased to meet you. Start me up. I'm here to tell you all about Channel 4 Friday Night Comedy. So start me up. Now then, there's three great new comedies from New Green Wing. That's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. Ow! Friday night comedy this Friday on Channel 4. Switch me in. It's going to be a winner. Carl, right? What what do you think it's like being a crab? If you, if you could go now, your mind, into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the, the, the squids you'd see? What, what, what's it like, do you think? I want you to, it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think it would be a slug? What would you do if you were, if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen but you're a slug and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> No, because what what do you do? I'd I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God! Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle, and that's the yeah, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be it's, reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his re- rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's terrible. You but know. but hang on though, is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is he, well, yeah. Well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's, that course people aren't gonna like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant- How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle, you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other beetle, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around, and you go, you go in there and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first, what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd, like, like in life, right, um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And, I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you, there is- Whoa, hang on, what do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. 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 She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, it's, you treat- So you're, you're, you're these, those beetles, they're scrubbing around, right, you're sort of like watching them and there's, and then you realise that you want a mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What do they do? How did they get on? Well- It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but you feel bad? Because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was that was a bit sick? Because you've got a human mind. Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? And go oh, pretend to think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. 
So you've got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got, they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? But no, that's what I'm saying though. Beetles are different because they do <laughs> tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. It's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. Alright, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh God! Okay, all right, another one. So there are sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right. What What would you do, right? If you were suddenly a fly, right? And you were knocking around with the flies, right? And you had to land on some, uh... Excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, loving but I it. wouldn't- no, I wouldn't be loving it, though, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd- I'd just- I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in! I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here. What wait, watch, and that. Cos they don't- I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a- um, you, were uh, had to go and put your mind in, like, the, um, an un, uh, hatched egg of something. Like, maybe one of those, e like, uh, that a wasp was injected in a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm- now I'm in a spider, as a ba- as an, an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh Will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? <laughs> I just pray to God it never happens. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. I don't believe it, he's written it down! The well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary, and uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him one pound fifty. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? It's good, that. All Say right. it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah, good, isn't it? Good, that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a, a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're gonna do, that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest, right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're gonna die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're gonna die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right, then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all gonna die stress. Cause it wouldn't matter. Cause it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep. I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd, some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we never know that. we're going to, because we, we stress, what if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know, 
But, but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... Na you, you never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we were putting in a new lung. They never... They don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, Clear! <laughs> Clear! <laughs> Rushing about today. Got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen him for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back than, uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of, <laughs> of the a ramblings man. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's a just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right, mm. say if all this has happened before, right, podcasting's been happening years ago. Mm. Something happens. Again, a right. lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you that, leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So, the world happened, no. we came back, we... Uh, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it then if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still f you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat once they've got everything they need. You start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> uh, well now, well now, well now. What have we here? I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Uh, there's three great comedies. Green Wing, It's Nearly Ready. My name is Earl, and the It Crowd. Uh, the great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. And what have we here? Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle as it happens. Friday night comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on, now then, well now, young man. Uh, well now, now then, well now, now then, young man. Ah, uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final monkey news, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, right? Because we've we've covered it all. All the monkey news has been covered. It has, it has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right? Do you know? Um, in the first uh, podcast that we did. We uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where we left? So haven't you got a real no a new monkey news? Well, it's an update, isn't it? I mean, is it new? Has no, it happened recent? Has it happened since podcast one? I have to pick Ricky up on the point that he thinks any of the monkey news we've heard <laughs> a happened and b <laughs> happened recently. It almost always happened in olden times or ages ago. Uh, oh, you're right. It never happened. <laughs> yeah. 
Right, anyway, so like I say, the first monkey news, it was about this monkey that went into space. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little chute on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went, it went up there, uh, did a really good job, it was taught how to press the buttons, hit the left button for a banana, you know. Right button to, to go right, uh, make history and go, go into right space. Right, um. Ooh, what do I want? Not more banana. You haven't taken off yet? Eh, more banana. Oh, we shouldn't have given him a choice of banana or a change history. We should have, they're the right button. We should have fed him before he went and then he had a right button. He's at the left button again. He's just eating bananas up there. What's going on? It's costing us a fortune. Hey, oh, fucker. Press the right button and do something. bananas. Hey, he hit the left button again, the little fucker. So anyway, yeah, I told you, he went up there, he came back, he could never get that. The high, high exactly, again. yeah. You mm. know what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. so anyway, there was, there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA programme. And it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, so mm. a bit of an update, that's, that's the same one as I talked about, his right. name was Ham. As well as him, there was one called Enos. He, he went round the world loads of times. So anyway, what I've found out about it since then, um... Am went up there, did the left-right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when, when he went up there. And something went wrong with the machinery. And do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> yeah. There's two buttons in this spaceship. Banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. But, but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So, so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no. How did so that, what, that so what had been though? taught, what, oh, uh, this is the problem with, with electronics, isn't it? Well no, it was, I don't know this. Apparently this is the problem. But the good th I mean honestly, look it up if you want, this is all online by the so way. So what mm. happened when it all went haywire? What, what occurred? Well, luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips. <laughs> right, he's so he was right, well I know this isn't right. <laughs> As much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> so, was his thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He you said, know I mean? can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done on working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years. Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella. They've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. <laughs> what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> And they mm. had to raise fourteen million pounds mm. to make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp home for retired <laughs> As chimp retired NASA trained monkeys. Chimpanots. Chimpanots. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of even though they're not gonna be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And They're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, remember the that time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's it. So if you want to, like, give give some money to towards their home, right. you can go to, like, savethechimps.org. And it's all there, all that, all that information that I've given you. It's all there, you can... I'd be surprised out. if all the information you've given us is there. It's all there. I'd be very surprised. It's all there, just retired, you know, monkeys and that who have done the bit. Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same place. That's what I mean. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that. That was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys. Uh, do your bit. Because they've done their bit. Uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up. Do you know what I mean? It's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. Thank you so much for listening to these uh, these twelve podcasts. I I've really enjoyed it. I know um, uh, Stephen Carl have. Um, this podcast was, uh, as usual, hosted by Positive Internet, the world's number one podcast. Next week, a, a brand new podcast. Um, we have, as I say, we have got to charge a little bit for it because um, it does cost money to host. And uh, please, please keep listening. It, it is going to be very little, and uh, you know, Carl. Carl needs your money. I, if you could see what I see now, he's just looking at me with his. He just he just needs stuff, don't you, Carl? What do you need? What do you need? Just something more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
For information on the archive of the podcasts, these last 12 shows, and for the new podcasts to come, go to rickygervais.com. You can register there. We'll send out loads of information. Uh, plus, you'll just find out links to, uh, to how to get all these, uh, all this stuff that we're, that we're offering out there. There's also a free taster if you just can't wait for more of Carl's nonsense. Make sure, please, that you register uh, your email and everything so we can get in touch and just tell you what's going to happen uh, with the Ricky Gervais show, with Carl's mind, and with everything else. rickygervais.com. Go there. Makes perfect sense. Uh, it's the, it's the end of an era, but the start of a new one. It's almost seamless, in a way, isn't it? The end and the beginning. But, Carl, what do you think about that? How things end and new things begin? Um, well, I suppose you've got to have an end for a beginning, so it's just a bit odd that we've got an end and having a beginning. But that's science for you. <laughs> <laughs>